Welcome in everyone to episode 146 of the Podcast Podcast. I'm your host, Caleb Payne, joined by my previous co-host, Misty, no longer Misty Anacor. Hello, Misty, bruv. See, you know yeah. what? Yeah, this is a little bit under the weather, too. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I can't lie. Um, I, uh, while a lot of people catch post-event depression, yeah, <laughs> I just caught fever, to be honest. Yeah. Um, well, you're socializing. You were at the socials. I was yeah. sleeping through the socials. So yeah, that's a you problem. <laughs> gonna lie. Is it but... just a me problem? No. Let me yeah, paint the picture for everyone. Right. Saturday night. There's a social. Right. Starts at like 8 p.m. Uh, I'm exhausted uh, because I was I was up a little bit later the night the night before. Um, I was doing some like videos for my patrons uh, for because the, the new G- GBL rotation came out. So I was like, I went to sleep probably around like two three o'clock. But I had to get up at like eight because I had to report to the check-in area for players for day two players <laughs> at nine. <laughs> yeah, you didn't need it's what, to go. I didn't need to go. <laughs> I didn't know, but they told me like some people said it was nine, so oh, I went. Right, like you know, like I wanted to be safe. I don't want to get like a game loss if I didn't show up at yeah. nine. I showed. They just gave my team sheet, and that was it. You know, <laughs> and they the lead was saying stuff. But, like, a lot of the players weren't even listening. I felt like I was the only one standing there listening to what the lead said. I mean, they didn't say anything, like, groundbreaking. But still. I like, yeah, And then I, I mean, see Arrow, like, You're five. Every word, bro. <laughs> well, I thought it was important, right? But no one else is paying attention. I felt it was almost rude that they're just talking over the guy. But anyway, and then Arrow shows up at 12.30 p.m. Well, he's like, I'm well rested, ready to go. I didn't battle until, like, 2 o'clock. So I was tired, right? I was tired. So next time I think I'm going to, like, ask... Like to be safe, I was just gonna ask like every judge. They'd be like, "I need a confirm. I just j- triple checking, right? Is it is it whatever? Yeah. If if there's a next time." But um, so I was a little bit tired, and so after I lost on day two, I just went back and took a nap, and <laughs> I didn't wake up till ten p.m. Uh, oh. And the social was at the place that um it's been at for the past two years for Worlds in USC last year, uh, so I knew that it closed at like eleven. And I messaged Janico. I'm like, hey, social's still going on. He doesn't get back to me, right? So I'm like, that's probably gonna close in an hour. Like by the time I get there, maybe half an hour at best. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know, hang out in bed and just GPO or do something. I don't I don't remember what I was doing, just browsing the Discord. And man gets back to me at like 2, 3 a.m. <laughs> And he's like, bruv, like we, we went out to another bar afterward that closed at like one or two. Like you should have came. I was like, what are you telling me at 3 a.m. going to help me with? Right. Like, how, how is that? Like, like, how am I supposed to know that? Right. My roommate, uh, Ramble you know Man Ray, came back by then. So, like, I didn't know there was something going on. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Like, so obviously, in my defense, in it, yeah, I find it difficult to. Um, no, but the thing is, you responded to me, I feel like at 10. Let me check our messages. I'm pretty I'm sure you that. said something no, 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 at no. ten. It probably would have been um, uh, a deep, because because here's the what thing. Do you mean? He was what do you mean? I know the difference like, between oh, you and no, deep. No. What you mean? That's <laughs> deep. Did you say I'm racist or something? What you trying to say? <laughs> no, 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 like, yeah, I, I didn't. Ch- uh... Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, it's a copy. Yeah, copy. yeah. No, because I re- oh. I saw something on Twitter, so I sent it to you, and then. You said, oh, it's a copy pasta, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh, okay. And then I say, I literally respond, not even one minute later, <laughs> on the same minute, I say, is the social still going on? Oh, so you're, you're yeah, there you know, literally that's checking that's your message, bad, that's and bad. then you don't get back to me yeah. for three and a half hours later. It actually was, why didn't you come? It actually was <laughs> three and a half hours later. You say it actually was. Yeah, no kidding, it actually was. <laughs> Anyway, I mean, yeah, you know, partially, I'm not blaming Anchor. I, I, I technically did oversleep the time. I just, if I just showed up at eight, it would have been fine. But I was, I was tired. Yeah, honestly, I tired. like I, yeah, I don't even know why I re- responded to your your initial message. Not saying that I shouldn't have responded to your initial message, but like usually I'm just like I'm just sure, like sure. talking bear. No, I I'm know. Like, yeah, I mean, you responded right away. Well, that's the thing. That's why. That's why I thought like, oh, maybe it's over because he's responding, yeah. or he's bored out of his mind. He wants me to hang out with him, but he's responding. But yeah. it was none of the above. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. Yeah. we got yeah. some stuff to talk about. But Anacor is six six, so maybe I maybe I dodge some some sickly players. I know. Oh well, um, yeah, if one of the Unite Ill. casters, I I think he was like he was really sick. Um, he said he's not sure if it's COVID. Um, uh, his name's Evan. 
uh what's his name um can't i can't remember his last i I can't remember his like his like oh hashimoto um, yeah 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 but what's this it's um I don't know. I just remember that name. Shoot, I like, I, oh, like I, 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 I just, names. I just call him Evan, but I know, um, a oh, Wonder Chef, Wonder Chef, yeah, oh, he's okay. one of the United Casters, yeah. Anyway, he was just tweeting about how he's super sick. He wasn't sure if it was yeah, COVID or not, but definitely get tested. Yeah, so. I know mine's definitely not COVID, but it was a bit annoying. I feel yeah. like it's a combination of a few things, right? So one, um, being out very late the night before, uh, two. No, okay, the night before I wasn't cold. But the next day, yeah, I was like, I saw a bit of sun in the morning, yeah. And I was like, boom, spring. It was it was summer. nice out on yeah. Sunday. It was actually really nice yeah, out. Yeah, but only for a few hours, bruv. After oh, the that, afternoon, yeah, I was that dying. Was... I was oh, freezing. I, I, I pass out again. <laughs> I pass out from 6 p.m. to like midnight the next day. So <laughs> what the hell, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because the same thing i was i mean i was jet lagged and then yeah, i yeah. i went and grabbed lunch with a friend um i was catching up with too so so i knew back in the day yeah and uh so we went down to um brick lane so really nice. okay yeah yeah yeah. that was real nice so we got some food there walked around and then i Did came you go to that really famous bagel place no we walked by it the yeah, line was 24 7 bagel place yeah. and there's another bagel shop right next door that, that has no line <laughs> and i asked him i was like is this that good and he's like I tried the bagel. It's not that good. Is it good? Did you have it? Uh, I feel like I've had it before, but it's been at night, so I couldn't really say. But it, it's like, oh, okay. He said he's had it, and it's not that good. <laughs> he lives like right around that block too, like right bright brick lane. Yeah. So, um, so he goes by that place imagine. often. I feel like a good judge of it would be someone who lives in New York, because I feel like New York is known for bagels. I've had before. I've had New York bagel because I grew up yeah. in Connecticut, it's like right next to it. So. So um, yeah, I feel like that that would be a good. How good could a bagel be though? To be right, and the, by the time we walked around, it was like three, four p.m. Like, what kind of bagel hour is this? I mean, <laughs> I, they are open twenty four seven, but like, yeah. that's wild. I, what I'm curious is uh, if twenty four seven, like legit four a.m., are people lined up too? That'd be wild. Uh, they're usually like they're not lined up, but they're usually like standing outside eating. Yeah, it, it becomes like when it gets to late, it becomes like the. Um, is that like oh, the post party the bus? party and we're looking yeah. for somewhere to eat sort of thing. and we're all just gonna get bagels yeah yeah, pretty <laughs> yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. It's, i can see Literally. how that goes yeah it's like it's the equivalent good. of like the same thing but kebab in it but like oh we've well, got a bagel option it, instead you know for our uk listeners if you've been to that bagel spot let us know what you think of the bagels is it is it worth the wait i didn't wait because i well i literally just ate lunch too but i'm just like i'm not gonna wait for for this too who knows how it is but that was a really cool street though it was packed yeah, it was packed because yeah. it was a really nice day. I nice say, my yeah. friends like, yeah, it's never really this nice in London. Yeah, also Brick Lane is kind of nice as well because it's like um super diverse. Yeah, yeah. So Dude, the I'm thing like, is, everyone like... here, I'm like, I don't think anyone's first language is English here. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. wild. Like, I, no, no, yeah. no, I mean, I'm not trying to make fun of people. I mean, English is not my first language, either. but like, like when I'm talking to people, I can't tell. I was like, I don't even think that's an English accent. Like, I was like, it's yeah. another yeah. accent, but yeah. I can't figure out what it is. I think right. like, so, okay, so here's the thing. I've never been to New York, right? I've never been to the US in general. But um, one of the things that like people often say is that like New York is uh, quite segregated. Like you get areas of um, uh-huh. different like ethnicities and stuff like that. Yeah. Right? And um, I think someone uh, once brought up the fact that like London has places like that as well, right? And Brick Lane's a good example where it's like, yeah. it's a big Bangled- Bangladeshi um population yep. that even the signs are written in bengali and yeah like, yeah i noticed yeah it was actually you know I mean? but i think one difference is is that like I, i'd say it would be segregated if there was no reason to go to brick lane right and if it was just purely just like a bangladeshi community and that's it but the thing is is that you've got like Wasn't. you know loads of like thrift stores and stuff like that you've got like yeah. loads of food markets you've got oh a my lot gosh, of like reasons the, uh, for... the burberry thrift store is wild there's like a oh, place with like Oh yeah, it's on Brick Lane, but it's like it's like a it's like it's a th- I think it was called a thrift store. My friend said right. it was a thrift store, but they're like no, sorry, a vintage store. Right. It was yeah, a vintage yeah, yeah. store. So like he thought like, you know, it's like almost like a thrift store like, oh, like older clothes like would be cheaper. Be cheap. But no, it's like like 500 pounds <laughs> for like a Burberry <laughs> vintage jacket that they don't yeah. make anymore, stuff like that. And <laughs> literally when he yeah. said that, I was like yeah, I feel like Anacor's probably been here. Like that's the first time I've. Had yeah, do you know what? Funnily enough, actually, I like I I haven't been to Brick Lane in years, um, and I wanted to go before I left London because 
I, I'd like tried out a few different markets because I wanted to start like doing um, like thrift shopping and like actually finding some good stuff. Yeah. Uh, and Brick Lane was like the last place where I was like, oh, I know I'm going to find good stuff here. And I never ended up going. Um, mm. The only downside is now is that like the the thrift in Japan just kind of overshadows anything that you can find in London. Really? So, I don't like know the thrift is that good in Japan? Bro, it's that good in Japan, man. What you like, just bought a bunch of? Did you buy a bunch of stuff in Japan? Yeah, man. I bought a bunch of every single time I've gone to Japan. Okay, last oh, time dude. I was there, I bought the least amount of things. Yeah, and I still yeah. came back with just like loads of jewelry. Hmm. Yeah, three. Okay. Uh, Japan is too good, man. But I That's need to tough. go Brick Lane soon because I feel like they also have. Uh, from what I remember, years ago they also had like a load of like independent stores, which are like mm -hmm. very. Uh, I bought some stuff there too, yeah. Some, some like some yeah, like and I think that's stuff, really yeah. cool as well because you know, like, it's not like a, you know how these days a lot of the like independent stuff is um, no, kind of uh, saturated with just you know uh, mass made Chinese stuff and yeah, just yeah, yeah, rebranded in it, yeah. So it's like it's kind of nice to find things which are actually like you know handmade or something mm -hmm. like that, but then also aren't um you know super super expensive and i feel like you can get some of those uh, around there so yeah um, no definitely dude yeah. you know before we get into youtube accounts you know something i realized that i learned this weekend uh, while getting dinner with anacor <laughs> i'm not going to tell you all why <laughs> but this man <laughs> legally changed his name his middle name to goku <laughs> yeah it's actually yeah. wild and i legit was like oh, wait really <laughs> But no, legally he did. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Should you like? Yeah, should you release a reason on like episode like one thousand or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll, I'll wait that number. long. I don't mind. Give me yeah. a number. No, no, give me give me a realistic number. Uh, okay, let me think. So it's like I it's said, episode one fifty for RuneScape, my RuneScape story, and it's approaching actually pretty soon. I'm four weeks away. You know what? That's kind of wild. <laughs> we can run two hundred. Honestly, I don't care. You don't mind like, sharing it. That's Nah, I, I don't really care. And I know, I know like some people are just like, oh, maybe it's like unadvised. Yeah. I don't care, man. I'm not going to lie. There's, there's a lot <laughs> You'll of You'll be the first guy to go to prison for having a male name named Goku. <laughs> 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 like, he didn't hurt or kill anyone, right? It's nothing like that. Yeah, it's yeah, nothing yeah, like it's that. It's so good. It's so good. It's <laughs> nothing like that. And um, honestly, if the fans come for him, he's going to change his male name to Vegeta so they can't find him. <laughs> 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 uh, soon his main uh, full name will actually be Missy Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Just need to catch enough cases. <laughs> Missy Goku Williams. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Well, I should be getting my um, my new passport in. I I think it's possible. I mean, I don't know if it's actually today, but I got a an email or I got a text from the passport office saying something's arriving today. It could just be the documents that I sent them to prove <laughs> that my name's changed. Um, but it but could yeah, this yeah, no, I'm not even kidding. His passport's going to have the name Goku on it. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. I was gonna I was gonna post a picture of it as well. I, but I probably wouldn't have posted it on. You Twitter. know, I was gonna post it on Instagram. But. If if you have kids one day, you should really yeah. lean into it. And you should give their middle names like Gohan. Oh, like... I really intend to. Yeah, <laughs> really. I, I actually want to. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know what? You know what? One thing I also realized as well, right, is that like, and this is also, get your wife you know, to change her name to her middle name to Chi Chi. <laughs> I don't know. I have a whole family thing. <laughs> oh, you don't I, like that? You think she's yeah. going to like Gohan as the middle name of the child? Like, oh, now you got opinions on what you <laughs> like and don't like as a middle name. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's up to her. And if she wants to change it to Chi Chi, like, go for it. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, one thing I realized is that, like, also, this is to do with, um, this is also, like, the reason why my, like, in game name is, you know, Anacor and stuff like that. Is, uh, I think there's only Wait, two. Wait, where's Anacor come from? So that was like when I made up my own Saiyan name because like all the Saiyan names are like they're just vegetables oh. and then they're just like um, the words, are, the letters are like jumbled around sort of thing. Isn't it? Wait, what? Um, Wait, what's Goku's? Goku. So his is Kakaroto. So his is just carrot. Oh, oh okay. Um, okay. Yeah, Vegeta's yeah. what? Vegetable? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And his what's like half Anacor? brother is Tarble, which is also vegetable as well. Mine's Coriander. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh who who would who actually even pieced together that that's what that's where your username came from though i feel like that's so obscure that wouldn't be picked up very easily maybe that's yeah, that's, that's not a bad man. thing 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, Coriander. Oh, yeah. that's what I'm gonna call you now, Mr. Coriander. <laughs> yeah, but um, so the thing is, yeah, is that like I feel like the <laughs> only two franchises which I actually like feel like it's I, so wild. <laughs> yeah, which I feel like are back is like Dragon Ball Z and uh, Kingdom Hearts. Like those are the only two franchises which I actually like having. Uh, you know, either like merchandise from or like i feel like i have a connection to you know and mm. despite playing pokemon i don't feel like i have that with pokemon you know? i never played kingdom hearts actually i didn't realize you played that much yeah kingdom, kingdom hearts. hearts amazing man really uh, and i don't play that many games as well in it but it's uh that's what I'm yeah about. well yeah i figured um, that um yeah. you actually technically are supposed to do face paint today but it's okay you're feeling yeah sick. do you know what so though? You, you're, yeah. oh, you're, you're just backlogged a week right that's fine so yeah. so that's next fine. week you do stage one but you know yeah. that next next week yeah if you don't hit it by next week carry, you yeah. can do yeah, stage yeah. two right oh yeah, yeah, uh, that's one thing i forgot to bring actually i forgot to bring the paints when i went to <laughs> yeah that's one thing so i forgot to pack cool. that's why i didn't give it to you but yeah it's so fine. we'll do <laughs> some face paint because i i hate i hit legend Pretty early. I was actually pretty like quick yeah. with it too. I mean, faster than Doombug, faster than Rise, faster than a lot of people. Uh, faster than Softof. I queued into her like every night for like a couple of days. And I kept beating her, <laughs> and I kept safe swapping Mandibus, and she kept getting Lantra on it, and she would still beat me. And so like uh, like it was funny because like like um. She was like tilted the night before, right? Because I faced Homestead Center and Sofitov like back to back. So they're both saying GG's in like the caster chat. And then I didn't say, I didn't start it or anything. And then the next time when I beat her and she was on the same team, I just said, I just tagged her. I was like, go to sleep, right? Because like 1 30 a.m. And her response was, how am I supposed to sleep if I keep losing and I have Lantra on Mandibuzz every time? <laughs> And I beat her a third uh, time too. Geez. So when she hit legend, you know I just wrote Actually, GG's <laughs> in her post. But slight uh tangent, but not really. Yeah. I started watching Avatar. Oh yeah. It's good, right? Yeah. Well, you, I know good. you said you good. saw the live action, right? Did you watch the yeah. animated? And honestly, do you know what? Yeah. Good, I, I have right? the no no, it's not even that. Like I, I think the live action was fine, but I have this issue with anything I watch, yeah. So like I don't like spoilers. I don't like watching the same thing twice. Same. Yeah. I oh, can't same. Do... Do you not yeah. like prequels either? I hate prequels because you know how it's going to end. Oh, like, like Star Wars, you. right? Like you know like Anakin's turning into Darth Vader. Yeah. Like there's no way, way around it. He's going to do it, right? Yeah. I think I think the thing is though is that in a lot of prequels, yeah, it's like that won't be the the like surprise plot, yeah? But they'll just like make references to things. They'll like a good uh, yeah. prequel is made knowing that you know what happens at the end. But it still gets you surprised because obviously the main plot is like something else. Do you know what I mean? You seen Game of Thrones? Uh, nah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know what you've yeah. seen then for a prequel. But anyway, uh, yeah. I generally but, don't like um, prequels as much, but there are some decent ones. Yeah, yeah. I, but I get you with the prequels in it. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, yeah, is that like the whole of book one, I was like, oh, I kind of know like already what happens. And yeah. it was good. It was good. Oh, yeah. oh I see what you're but saying. Because like, you watch a live action. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, it was not as exciting as it would have been if I didn't know what happened. Yeah. You know what I mean, but now I'm on book two and I have no idea what happened. So, it's oh, great. yeah, yeah you're going to love it. You're going to love yeah. it. That's actually why I started watching the anime series because, but I watched it before. It was because M. Night Shyamalan was coming out with the live action movie. Right. The yeah. first live action movie was covering book one. But I watched the animated book one first, right? Which made the I don't know if that I don't know if I didn't watch it if it would make M Night Shyamalan's version any better because that thing was awful to begin with. <laughs> like it was, you should watch that if you if you're looking for a good laugh. I don't even know how even the extras in the background are bad actors, like these guys <laughs> holding axes like in in like um uh what do you call it? um uh Lord Ozai's like cavern yeah, yeah, right yeah. the fire lord <laughs> like he's they're like holding axes like to open and close for people walking by <laughs> even that was awkward i started <laughs> laughing when they started opening i was like why does this look so bad how is it acting that, that wrong. <laughs> they pronounce the main character's name right instead of ang they oh, pronounce it on bad. imagine if they made a dragon ball z movie and they instead of goku they called it goku <laughs> <laughs> yeah goku <laughs> and of course <laughs> coriander <laughs> <laughs> Karen, oh, <that's> <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. yeah it was that bad i don't know how like i just don't understand how it could be that sloppy like it seemed like someone tried to like didn't even try to study for the pop quiz like it was crazy <laughs> yeah it was that bad yeah. but um, i think when my friends watched the um 
So when I was watching the live action with my friends, yeah, um, they were making a lot of comments and like a lot of the comments I kind of remember. Uh-huh. And so like when I'm watching the animated thing, I'm thinking about it and I'm like, like you guys are just hate for no reason. Like <laughs> you guys are just. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I probably would have made some of the same comments. Like they they yeah, they yeah. butcher some of the plot lines too. Like the yeah, um the I cave, they like the love cave, some of them right? And stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like. Why is she down there with her brother? Like, this was like a love, like a romantic love yeah. cave, right? I was like, what yeah. the heck? Oh, actually, I was you know, really I didn't see out. that episode, so that was good. Yeah. Because um, I, uh, I oh, was wait, like, Wait, oh, what do you mean? You didn't see You didn't watch it? You didn't nah, watch you know every what? episode? Start, I, I, nah, I started watching it with them, yeah. And then I was like, look, I don't want to ruin it for myself, yeah. Or like, no, no, it wasn't even that. I started watching it with them. And then Oh, you didn't I went finish off the live action, watched. you said. Yeah, no, I kind of did. So, like, basically, I started watching it. I went to bed. They watched, like, one, two episodes more. And then I was like, well, I don't know what's happening in it yet. So, I don't want to watch it with you lot. So, then I didn't watch it. And then, like, I think they were, like, last two episodes. And I was like, bun it, man. I'll just watch it anyway. So, I know Uh, the ending in the beginning. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, it's probably better that you didn't watch all that, too. Because they've ruined some of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. Well, let's get into the YouTube comments in a second. Actually, before... (laughs) We do that. Uh, we should put up on the screen Anacor in his Missy outfit <laughs> for those that haven't seen it for whatever yeah, reason. So if you're yeah. watching a YouTube version, you can see hey, it. Like I said, yeah, this Misty lasted one day. Yeah, your blonde hair has been lasting for months. So no, it's fine. I the the blood the blonde, the blonde hair one. Yeah, is fine. There's one. like enough people that said actually you kind of pulled off. We're like I can I can rock with it. Hey, hey no think- one said that about Missy, right? <laughs> All they said is props for coming yeah. through. Oh no, the <laughs> the the hair on the stomach, the, the legs. Yeah, Yo, you sent me this like picture, uh, like selfie the night before. I was yeah, dying yeah, when yeah, I saw yeah. that. <laughs> I was like, I gotta be the first one to take a picture of them tomorrow, right? When I see them. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but I can't lie, yeah, bruv. I was literally every time I had to go to Lou, yeah. Obviously, the like, look, when I'm in the go area, when I was in the go area, yeah, yeah, there was context, yeah. Everyone like either knew what was going on, yeah, or they knew me and they could ask what was going on, or they just had a general idea, you know, like, or, right. You know. But obviously, you know, going to the toilets, you have to like bypass all the public spaces, yeah. Brad, <laughs> there's a lot not, of people not only when i was leaving the toilets as well yeah because like when i was but i had the maddest screw face on my face yeah it like telling people like don't chat to me yeah don't chat to me you know me do you know what i mean <laughs> it? Yeah. i was like i was <laughs> so unapproachable I was, I was so unapproachable <laughs> as i was making that walk from the toilets to the go area <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Like, uh, the body. <laughs> and then when really I got to the girl, it. it was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of it funny. Was, I got left. It was uh, it was it was pretty good. I gotta say too, for those that don't know, anytime I was trying to look for Anacor on that first day, <laughs> don't care where he is. I found him. Right? Is he battling? I look in the player area. Right? There's like what fifty plus seats. I see him spot on right i see that little orange hair from the back the bright <laughs> yellow tank top right and he just hunched over tapping i'm just sitting there crack it up right spectator same thing i look from the back right you know people <laughs> some people don't have the standard like blonde through black hair right spectrum but ain't no one got that bright orange with the tank top and the hairy shoulders <laughs> right from the back <laughs> so spot him right away oh, in the crowd geez, too it was geez. uh it was uh homing beacon yeah. <laughs> but uh i think there were was... some people who on day two didn't realize i was there yeah and they were like yeah, it was yeah, hard was it was hard to find you no, i didn't even try to you. find you i didn't even try to find you on day two i don't know where you were in the crowd i was like i'm just gonna uh, wait around yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right let's get into the youtube comments before we get into uic because a lot happened uh ginger ninja said just got on the train down to euic and this drops exactly what i needed for my journey down hype to see anacor again especially dressed as missy and to meet the one and only caleb Payne. i feel like i met ginger ninja maybe last year at uic but maybe mm. maybe i'm mistaken i don't know i could have sworn i met i um, mean ginger from my before. knowledge i think he's the only ginger guy there <laughs> no, no, there's, there's, no, no, there, there was, a, no, no. I, I know what Ginger Ninja looks like. I, I knew, oh, right, like, right, I knew okay, what he looked right, like right, when right, I met him too, yeah. which is why I was like, I'm, I'm pretty sure we like, <laughs> um, chatted before. But no, no, no. There was definitely, there was definitely more than one Ginger there. What are you talking about? There's another like guy who, that actually, there's yeah. another Go player. Um, I don't know what I'm saying. He's like on the taller side, like pretty. I'm gonna build, feel I bad think. if I actually know who they are as well. 
I I I I like I feel like the names on top of my head. I just can't remember it. But um, anyway, maybe it'll come to me. But no, I, I'm pretty. They competed too. I'm almost positive. Um, anyway, if it's Smash says, I think we need Swiss brackets when we pay as much as TCG and VG for the lesser players to get reps in at a live event. Pokemon isn't as much about seeing who is the best and more about time playing the game with other trainers. Uh, we also shouldn't need to provide phones if Niantic was a better company. VG gets charging stands. I don't know. It just seems like our starting base Niantic is our shortcoming. Um, an item that raises or lowers IVs would be against Niantic's trying to get you to play all the time. So they would uh, need to be like rare, rare like rare XL. I just don't think it fits Pogo's game style. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about some of these. Um, how much more does VG and TG pay more than they go? I thought like the price was similar. I thought I assume they pay the same. I think they do pay the same. But I think that's oh, what I he's saying. Know. I think he's saying that like we pay the same, but like oh yeah, yeah. oh that, I see, I see. Yeah, I, I, I misinterpreted. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what Infus Match saying. We yeah. need Swiss brackets when we pay as much. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I Interestingly, think, I think this the, is the a... I think it's a huge issue. The, the prob one thing I don't like about Swiss bracket, but I get it, is <coughs> if you drop if you lose enough games where you know like you can't make top cut, a lot of people just drop out of the tournament. Yeah, yeah. Because these are like nine, ten, eleven round tournaments. They're not like I'm not gonna yeah. play like five more rounds and spend five plus hours when I could leave. So like yeah. some of it is like kind of anticlimactic for people if they want to play it out because they're just gonna get a bunch of buys and stuff or like free wins essentially, like yeah, no show that's wins. True. But, but like I mean, you know, I guess it is what it yeah. is for those. That, I guess I it's mean, good to I, okay. The the benefit of Swiss is obviously it means that like losing two doesn't necessarily count you out. Um, however, yeah, but day two is super awkward too if you go undefeated and you just lose one, you're out, right? I think it's single. Yeah, email, I think. But I mean, I, I feel like it, I feel like the best of both worlds would be, and this is also like you know assuming that the infrastructure is there, because really the main issue is the infrastructure, right? Because yeah, I feel like if they did happen to have like the perfect infrastructure, then we probably would be playing Swiss. Um, but I feel like the best combination would probably be like Swiss and then double elimination top cut. You know. Yeah, that's a that's a long tournament though. That's really long. Yeah, but it's like realistically, like like because because if you think about it right now, it's double elim top cut, but half the people going to top cut already had a loss, so it won't take us long. If you go double elim top cut going to top cuts, that's going to do essentially almost like double the length, maybe a, th a third more. Uh, yeah, and I don't think double because you just have like you do the first round and now you've got the first set of losses and then. Yeah, yeah, you know but I mean? essentially so everyone like starts to lose round. twice, yeah. right? But then it's like I think um, so, so, you, so. You essentially just have one extra round. I, I right? think I think one sacrifice, which I'm okay with, is you won't be able to see every match either. On day yeah, two. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's Which the main thing. Because yeah. I mean, already, already they're trying to like you know um, do top twelves and stuff in in the smaller regionals to fill out the thingy anyway. Do you know what I mean? In it, so I think like. Uh, we can ignore production because production are going to fit, you know, make it. They're going to do what they can. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're going to do whatever they're they're going to do in it. So, uh, okay, I got a question for think, you. Yeah. So we have to do our current format right now: double elim <laughs> for the whole weekend, yeah. or we do Swiss single elim on top cut. Which would you prefer? Because because I'm, uh, I'm I I don't have any insights on this, so don't like don't say like oh this is what Caleb said he's a caster. Yeah, but yeah. my guess is. The current option, if if you work at TPCI, if you're organizing yeah. the formats and everything, is okay. We can stick with the current Go format, or we can bring we could make it parallel to our TCG and VGC formats. I don't yeah. know if they're going to do we're going to do like a hybrid of both, right, and just create a whole third format out of nowhere for no reason, right? When when the I mean, VG and the TCG is format is already working for them, right? There's no like clear, there's no like no strong argument to have double Elam top cut except for like. I don't know, maybe a better like player experience. I, no, but I think it, uh, I think the argument is that's like so um, weird too. You could like lose like three, four times in like f against four opponents in a whole weekend at at, at that. Rate. Uh, anyway, yeah, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Well, I'm I, saying I think, I think the, the yeah, the I think the argument would be um uh you don't just have the thing of like losing once and then you're out if you sweep the Swiss stage, you know, but. Um, so I, I mean, personally, I think no, it's but better. but that's yeah. that's usually how it is, though. I mean, why why would one person get a freebie pass when everyone else is like? I think it's I, like it Which sucks means. if you're the person that goes like six and zero on Swiss day one and you go in yeah. top cut, but still single elim and you lose one, you're out. But 
that's the most fair way i think to have swiss and top cut uh why 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 is it more fair than double limb well, no, assuming no, 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 you no. have no, oh no no I, I no I meant I meant oh I thought you meant just double elim for the one person that's undefeated no no no, no, no. I mean I mean oh, like okay. double elim top cut in it um yeah. so I feel like that's just more preferable anyway in it yeah but let's say that you only had a choice between the two because yeah I don't know for whatever reason um I'd still say Swiss and top cut because obviously we're going off championship points now in it so it would imply that people who can maintain good consistency would be able to uh secure more championship points do you know what i mean so would you it would say right now that's not the case um so I right feel now like seeding has yeah. helped a lot yeah yeah seeding definitely helps a lot yeah yeah like but i, I think, think seeding's like, like made the double elim structure a lot more i don't want bearable is not the phrase i want to say uh a lot more fair i should say yeah yeah, yeah, in my I, opinion, I agree. Yeah. Because you're not going to be stuck. Like, if you're like, like ten of the best, like, like fifteen players in one tournament, all in one bracket, it's just super rough. Because like, it's a strong chance, even if you're really good, you wouldn't make out of it. But if you're in any other yeah. bracket, you would just go on a winner side, right? But now that you do have seeding, it separates things out pretty well, in my opinion, to yeah. the point where you like, if you're a really good player and you're consistent, you're probably going to beat the lower seeds anyway, and you're going to consistently mm -hmm. make top cut, right? Which I think it's fair enough. I mean, yeah. and if you're if you're underseeded, right? Like, I mean, your seeding's not accurate. You just face good players, and you kind of prove your point. It's kind yeah. of like Kobe Kuplin, right? As example, or nine time Clasher at yeah. um, Liverpool is a good example of that too. Yeah, uh, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's true. But like, I think re regardless, because uh, there was a bit of like discussion, I think yesterday with like some VGC people. But I think I think regardless, like. Um, if there was the possibility of us playing Swiss and there was no like, you know, um, issues with infrastructure or like, you know, scheduling and stuff like that, then I think everyone would rather play Swiss, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. I guess the question for you is, since you said you like this more, what's the benefit of Swiss plus a double elim and top cut? As opposed to a single elim? Yeah. Uh, just what you said, and it? it's like, it's not like a... You lose one and you're out in it. And this is also again assuming. But, but you that could have lost on day one though, right? Eventually you have to like just win it win it all, right? Yeah. Like yeah, in my mind, in I'm like, like, how many like safety blankets do you need at a certain point, right? Like like, oh, you could lose two on day one and you could lose another one on day two and still win it all. Like that's a, like a lot of losses for a champion, right? Um You don't think so? I feel like that's a lot of leeway. Almost too much in my opinion. Yeah, but I think in in the same vein, in it, yeah, it's like again, like you're saying, you can sweep day one, and then lose immediately, and then you're out. Do you know what I mean? In it, yeah, like obviously it's a lot of yeah, losses. But yeah, if you're but good enough to, to sweep had, it all, you should be able to yeah, just like. But they they have to have had a lot of wins as well. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise they wouldn't get to the final, or they wouldn't win. So you know, it's kind of like it kind of. Well, it's just like coming in. It's just like going to day two on the loser side. On the loser side, on day two, you just have to win it all, right? Yeah. Like you have no, you have no flexibility. Yeah, yeah, but I, res I guess you already got your flexibility by like losing once in it. I don't know. I don't. I don't think there's any. I. I don't know if there's any necessarily any like. If if you have the option to do a single limb top cut or a double limb top cut, I don't think there's any downside to doing a double limb top cut. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's just, it's just a lot of time and a lot of. Lot yeah, of yeah, but like assuming yeah. that there's none of those issues in it. I don't think what do you mean? It's always going to be a lot more time and a lot more battles. What do you mean? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if they show on stream or not. It's inherently going to take longer. It's just like, no, but it would it's just probably also more exhausting for the players, right? I mean, think about it this way. For, from a player standpoint, now everyone plays like six rounds instead of on the winner's side, you should just play like But it, it would be a separate day. It would be a separate day. In it. So like, it's the very next day, right? Yeah. It's the well, next well, day. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> no, sleep six, then, six, like... six best of threes <laughs> on day one, and then, like, another eight best of threes on day two is a lot of battles. It's like a lot of... Sleep, bro. It's pretty exhausting. <laughs> Go to sleep. sleep, bro. You're the guy that came in looking like he was coming out of his deathbed <laughs> to record a podcast. Imagine um, if I said, you better, you better battle six <laughs> of the best players me. now yeah. at this tournament. <laughs> What? Who who was the guy who was asleep at like yeah yeah three in the afternoon yeah well yeah. you were asleep too it wasn't three in the afternoon for me I'm I'm on your time zone right now it's five a.m. for me too it just doesn't look like it yeah in the I had to wake up <laughs> I've been up <laughs> anyway, anyway I I uh, 
I think uh, I will say, I think I was definitely more me personally, right? Obviously, this is, this is all subjective. I like mm. the idea of Swiss more. Um, before I seating. like the idea of Swiss more before we had seeding, but yeah. now that we have seeding, I actually really like double Elin. Double Elin from a uh, from following like from a spectator standpoint is also way more enjoyable because like Swiss yeah, is I like so, like yeah. oh they won they lost they won it's like it's like hard to follow right whereas That's like true. double Elin is like pretty straightforward. Right. I mean, if you look at yeah. sports, sports is all single elim. You don't, you don't be like, oh, I'm watching like this football game. This team lost. Ah, uh, they'll come back tomorrow. I'm like, what? They're just out. <laughs> they're out in the top cut. There's not like, yeah, oh, we'll really come back high. again, right? Like, it's just yeah. like you, you got to like. I, I think the thing is like, you just got to clutch up, right? You just got to like, like yes, it'd be nice to have like you know like an extra life or something, but like if you want to be the champion, you want to win it all. You just got to go and do it, right? And I, I do I do get where some people say, uh, I don't have as much experience. I feel like it's a waste of time to fly there and just go 0-2 and just be out. But I think that's just more, me personally, I think that's just, I would just help you, like, that's good incentive for you to just, like, do a bunch of reps, come in as prepared as you can so that you don't mm -hmm. get that 0-2, right? Yeah. Like, the O2s, O2s are not accidents, you know? Like, um, like, it's, yeah, you might face a tough opponent, but anyone could lose in this game, right? So, and anyone could win. Is is really about your prep and stuff. Like you, you can have a bad draw, right, of your opponents, but like, you know, I mean, Doombug, he lost like round one in San Antonio. He just fought yeah. his way entire back, right? He could have gone 0-2 for sure, but he was like, no, I'm gonna hunker down, figure this out, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, to be honest, I I think I also um uh don't mind um double limb recently as well, in it. I think things that would make it better um one uh having like uh bracket graphics and like i know they can do it in it yeah so it's, it's not yeah. like a case of like oh can they do it but having bracket graphics like throughout the tournament meaning on downtime they can start like you know bringing up the bracket and being like oh let's have a look at like you know group b yeah i would say pokemon go doesn't have that much downtime actually because because the battles uh, actually oh, come pretty quick i mean there's some like when we have breaks the breaks are because they have to switch the casters. They can't have a caster sit there and go over the bracket and then bring out the other caster into desk. They're they're still in their seat, right? Yeah, but I the think breaks you know are what? Like, sometimes. Yeah, but sometimes yeah. I think there's enough downtime that they can just. No, no. Sometimes there are, and that's why they'll do certain like little segments and stuff. I mean, I think a yeah, bracket yeah. review is not a bad idea to. to I, I think that's I, way we've better. done some exactly. of that though. I know we did that at Worlds last year. No, so no, no, because it was at yeah. UIC, or but like at day two of UIC where they yeah, were yeah, like, yeah. up yeah. bracket. But I feel feel like they can do this in the group stages, and I'd I'd like as well. I will um, say one thing too, uh, talking about Infamous Master's point about like, you know, for lesser players to get reps in at live events, I think something that helps with that is all the challenges and cups we usually have yeah, at these regions, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. I think, or, or they even have side events, right? Where you could win like goodies and like plushies and whatever, right? And mm -hmm. like deck boxes, stuff like that. But like, I think like, I would say like, I think if that's the main concern, I would say... I would say just keep double elim, and for those that get eliminated early, even go O two, they could play in these side events, or they could play in these like challenges and cups, so they can still earn championship points, so they don't feel like their mm -hmm. trip was wasted. Because yeah. at the end of the day, like if you go like if you go O two in a Swiss round right now, you're out anyway. You're not making top cut, right? And you're not going to get you might not get any points out of it. So like at that point, like doesn't make sense to spend your time just playing Swiss. Like I think a lot of people just dip out and play the challenge and cup anyway if they want more reps, right? Because they can actually earn something from it. Um, you know, so I think that's like, that's always, uh, in my opinion, that's like a better option than, ju than just continue playing in a regional where you know that you're not really getting any actual points out of it. You might get some practice reps, but at the same time, like it's hard, it's hard to say like how meaningful those reps are because your opponents are probably also not playing for any either. So people are just like messing around, right? If you play in a challenger mm -hmm. cup, you're both still playing for points then you're both still trying just as hard, right? Mm. Like, there's definitely a feeling to it where, like, I, I played in some Swiss tournaments, like, still for, like, Continentals, where, like, I know I'm not making top eight or top cut and going to a world or whatever. And I'm just like, <laughs> and my opponent knows too, and we're just, like, screwing around. I'm like, whatever, I'll just run some ABA Bassy line, like, whatever. Like, it's, you know, like, there's no consequence. If I lose, I lose, right? It doesn't really impact anything. So, um, I think that this I think with the, the Swiss thing, though, is helpful. that, like, with, with Swiss and points, it's like, um, sometimes there's still possibility of like yeah you're not going to make top cut yeah but um you could potentially scrape the 
you know, whatever the uh, the necessary threshold is for like the minimum amount of championship points. But that's mean? the same thing at double E then, right? Like you might not make top cut, but you go into the semis of losing. Yeah, yeah, but as in one, like right? you could lose your two games and then you're like, well, what's the point of playing now? Well, there kind of is point of playing. But maybe once you lose four games, then there's no point. Yeah, okay, cool, drop out on it. But usually the locals or like the, the challenges in cups are, are not on the the main day either. No, no, I know, um, I know. But what, what I'm saying to you is like, I think like, it's just like a number thing, right? Because you're losing two and you might be able to get points because like, you know, there's like six round twists, right? Whereas in like double elim, you might have five opponents. So maybe you only lose one. Like, it's like, it's like the, it's like the same, like win loss percentage for points, in my opinion. Like there's not actually a difference there, I think, right? I mean, maybe the math is slightly different. But what I'm saying is, like, if you make a deep losers bracket run in double elim, how is that different from making like a, a you bubble into like the championship points by just losing a couple in a Swiss round too? Swiss bracket. I feel like you would lose like three or four. But yeah, yeah, I guess. No, so. no, no. Because uh, yeah, because you're thinking in terms of VGC TCG because they have like a thousand plus players. Yeah. We're not going to have a ten round thing. Uh, yeah, you can't be true. losing yeah. four rounds and try to get points. <laughs> you're not getting points, yeah, right? You're true. losing four out of the five rounds. You're not getting anything, right? <laughs> like yeah, it's yeah. like like it's like that's what I'm saying. Like in Go right now, <laughs> because of how many players we have. Like if if you lose like one like two game two thing it's it's the same as if you just went on a same, loser's yeah. bracket run that's and true, still didn't true. make top cut yeah from a points perspective at least right i mean obviously the math might not be completely analogous but that's my thoughts yeah. there on it. i don't know obviously this is objective right i'm not saying like anyone that wants swiss is like wrong or anything or, or or like or right like i just um i think what i'm saying is i think the seating has done a really great job of making things feel a lot more fair Mm -hmm. of and yeah. i think a lot of the com i don't want to say a lot of the complaints but some of the complaints about wine swiss over double elim was solved from the cd but mm -hmm. i don't know uh but talking about some more stuff uh, about what so um if smash is we also shouldn't need to provide phones if niantic was a better company did you guess charging stands yeah so yeah, the charging is a little bit yeah, they're way cheaper. Yeah, a charging stand yeah. is way cheaper than an iPhone. <laughs> These are like right? entire phones. Like, yeah, they're yeah. iPhone 15, so iPhone they're not 15, even like, yeah, yeah like that's 14, like. Think, yeah. Oh, are they 14? I think they only have 15 for like stream in the US. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinking. But that's like 500 plus, right? So it's it's yeah. one. Okay, that's that's a money thing for sure, right? But um, I would say the other the other aspect of it is um, it's not a Niantic program. Yeah. I mean, as someone that's like, you know, involved in this stuff. Like, it's not Niantic that funds. This is a TPCI event, right? So, um, I guess TPCI probably wouldn't say no. I mean, there might be some red tape. They probably wouldn't say no if Niantic's like, oh, we'll buy you all 300 iPhone 15s, right, for the event. Yeah. But <laughs> but I would say, like, they're they're separate things, right? That was That's, like, expecting, like, um, Niantic expecting TPCI to cover, like, the merchandise or like some of the tents they have for GoFest, right? Like it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense because that's a Niantic event. <laughs> so, um, but like, like I said, it's the price point is, you know, it's it, it'd be nice. I'm not saying it's not nice. I just think like mm. it's a little easier said than done. In that, I think aspect. that comes on the infrastructure thing as well. Do you know what I mean? And it's like amazing Wi-Fi and having all the phones available would be sick, but. Yeah, and the thing I, is, like, I don't see it happening anytime. TPCI soon. doesn't make money from these things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're spending money. They're not. They don't make any. They don't make any money on this stuff, right? Uh, which is why, like, you know, I'm not like some shill or whatever because I've like worked for. The, I don't work for TPCI. I'm just contracted to compensate, right? But like, but I because I I was curious too. I was like, what? Like, where, where's this? Where does this come from, right? But it's like, honestly, most esports just cost the company money, right? But the hope is that they get more people involved so that they stay around for the product longer. And mm. it's kind of like a long-term investment from the company. But, like, they're not making any money. Like, TPCI is not making any money. Like, all these uh, registration fees are usually just going straight to the venue. Like, the venue, like the organizers, not the Pokemon company, right? Um, but, you know, I'm not saying it's perfect, right? I'm not saying it can't be better. But I do think that there are a lot of things that have improved quite a bit since... 2022 right when we first started um but yeah i i i get what it's saying about the lowering ivs thing as well um doesn't fit the pogo game style i think it just doesn't fit <coughs> yeah like vision of the game at the moment but 
something I think all games need to f- realize is that they need to also adapt to their player base, right? You can't say like, oh, like a player was like, oh, free in-game currency all the time. Like that'd be kind of ridiculous, right? But I think you do have to adapt to what the players need as well. You can't just co- constantly be the ones setting the precedent, especially if it's not in line with what the players want. Because we could just play a different game, right? Like there's nothing forcing us to do this. It's not like, this ain't school, right? Where you have to do a project that the teacher says, right? This is like extracurriculars after school. And if you don't want to do it, you just play another extracurricular, right? Um, but it would be like the lowering and raising IVs would be in line with the main series game at least. So, um, yeah, bro, do you know the amount of like grubbing I've been catching recently? You, you know what You're the trying worst to get one is? Good IV yeah. one? I'm trying to get like I, I don't even know what IVs oh, I on want. On that yet. break I point, like, <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah. I did not realize uh, Tomahawk UK was that big on the break points. This man's yeah, like, bro. my dream annihilate was like a fifteen eight zero. I'm like, what the <laughs> heck are you smoking, dude? You about to lose like I'm a champ with those with those <laughs> HP values? Like, what's going on? Uh, yeah, you can't even yeah, tank like a things, cross shot. Yeah, like, what's know? going? Yeah. <laughs> I don't right. know. I mean, this. I mean, yeah. what? What? Am I shocked? This guy was running Thunder Lantern, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like I was the guy that ran Dynamic Punch Medicham, and I thought that was weird. But yeah. Thunder Lantern is even more weird, in my opinion. Like, that's just like that's a whole different. That's like running Ice Punch Polygraph. <laughs> Which honestly <laughs> probably basic. has more play than Lan- Thunder Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> Basing, <laughs> you know. Um. Yeah, man. It's oh, it's, it's so. Uh, it's not, you know what the worst one is, right? The worst one is is when it's already had a community day, yeah, and you're like, oh, we should. I should just played it better. Yeah. No, not only did it have a community day, it had a December event, like had a community December remix well. thing. Yeah, and you still I had didn't ignored get both. It. <laughs> yeah. I ignored both of them. Who's surprised? Um, Who's listening to but, surprise? Yeah. Anacor didn't catch enough stuff. And you know what? You know what happened on the first community day? Yeah, literally, I I, I vividly remember this. Right, I was in my living room. Yeah, I forgot that community day had started. Yeah, I was like, okay, cool. I went outside. I literally walked up and down my road. I caught a rank four, and I was like, all right, nice, I'm done. For charger bug? Yeah, yeah, and that was it. Well, so then, well, what are you, what are you still hunting for? I don't understand. What do, what do you? I'm trying about? to get different IVs, and I haven't, I haven't done like a dip, little right, deep dive, but I'm trying to get stress, like, don't stress, don't stress. There's like stress. some. Uh, okay, this is this is obviously it's my take, right? Uh, leave her. You could take it or leave it, but I'm gonna be real with you all, right? If the people that cared so much about breakpoints and bulk points just spent that effort scrimming and prepping and building a good team, I guarantee you it won't matter, right? I guarantee you. Hey, look, this is coming from me, right? I don't even scrim and prep as much, right? But I know that if I spent as much time scrimming and prepping as you all spent trying to find these perfect IV stuff, I'd be an even better player, right? No, but and I, th- I don't I run none of this breakpoint I, stuff, I right? I just like run you the best rate. that it takes more effort than it does oh no no let me say right I, oh, look unless I, I don't unless maybe you're like doom bug or something right i guarantee you these people that are obsessing about breakpoints and bulk ones can use some scrims right i've seen them make plenty of misplays on stream at tournaments right and they're worried about these breakpoints and stuff and they're just not throwing moves or not optimizing right or something right like i'm just i'm just saying obviously everyone can use some practice right even the yeah. best players in the i world. think i think most right. people I, I think that's true for most people right like most people don't really need to um think about breakpoints before their gameplay do you know what i mean it? yeah but i think like I think, I think a lot of people still need to work on the gameplay before the breakpoints you know what this reminds me of it's like uh, at the gym right when i was like usually uh-huh. more fit right this is how like people used to come up to me I, i'm not as like fit anymore but they'll come up to me when they see me lift a lot of weight they'll come up to me and they're like someone that's less fit like what what, what? What you eat? What you drink? Right? Like, what, what's your what's your diet? Like, what, what's your what's your secret plan? Right? They like in their mind they think like there's got to be something secret to unlock this next level of fitness, right? And just it's just just you just gotta put in the work. You gotta go in the gym. You just eat regular. Like, not everyone's gonna eat the same thing or drink the same thing. It's not like unless you're using like steroids, which I wasn't. Like, it's not really gonna be any like significant difference. You just need to spend the time for it, right? That's how I feel these people. I'm not saying everyone's like this, but a lot of people that harp on breakpoints and bulk points is what they feel. They spend all the time researching all this stuff about this. And then next thing you know, they don't even know some of their own matchups. It's like, what? Which cash beats the Zero two shields, right? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you spend too much on these breakpoints, bulk points. You don't even know, like, the most some of the most basic <laughs> matchups. Or I see some of the, like, the most obvious misplays. I'm like, what do you spend all this time for, right? You could have ran a rank one Annihilate and still lost this matchup, right? Like, it's not, it's, <laughs> like... You know, you know, I I think also like, you know, I think this is also like an accent effect too. 
I'm not saying it, it like some people were like obsessing on breakpoints and breakpoints before Axon, but I feel like a lot of people said, wow. Axon won Worlds. He had that Medi Slayer meta champ, right? I need it. I need to have a secret sauce like that too if I want to be someone as good as a world champ. That's not it, right? I'm telling you. Yes, I'm sure there are certain matchups that Axon played out that the meta champ helped him with. But one, his gameplay is like impeccable. And two, he's probably good enough that he ran a rank one meta champ. He still would have won, right? <laughs> like, like, but, but that's what a lot of people harp on, right? And I feel like it discredits Axon's actual skill levels in that regard. That's my soapbox. I know, I know some of you that listen to podcasts, they're like, oh, there Caleb goes again. He's talking about how breakpoints, <laughs> points don't matter. Uh, I'm telling you, right? I'm not saying don't way. matter. I'm saying you're focused on the wrong thing, right? Stop asking them what special food they're eating to get jacked and just put in the work and go to the gym regularly. That's all I got to say. That's my, that's my spiel. What do you think? That's fine. As someone that's hunting, uh, a I'll, I'll let you run. You're hunting a charge bike. You don't know what you're char- hunting. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're like, if if this, if this is a fitness know- analogy, you're just eating a bunch of random foods from grocery store. You don't know which one's going to get you strong. You're like, well, I, no, I know, I'm going to eat some I'm, coriander I'm, today, right? And see what I know happens. What I'm hunting. I just don't know what the IV spreads are, and I haven't like worked out yet. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm, you I'm know what? What are you hunting? You know what Pokemon you're hunting? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. As in, like, I know what I'm trying to achieve in it, but I just haven't like bothered working out yet. Yeah. Just doing a divulge too much, you know. Yeah, uh, don't don't do yeah. too much. Don't do too much. Yeah. Anyway, look, don't let me stop how you're playing, but I'm just saying a lot a, a lot more pe- like the vast majority of people in this game can benefit a lot from just scrimming more. Like some of the best players in the world, they just scrim a bunch, right? Even if they won a tournament, they don't just go into the next tournament and be like I'm good enough, right? Like they, I guarantee you, if they win another tournament, they prep for that one too. It was no accident, right? So like, like you, it's like you gotta stay in tip. Like it's like it's like a muscle, right? You gotta stay in form, right? You can't just like do one achievement and just say, oh, I sprinted a mile in four minutes. I could do it again in five months from now without training. No, like you gotta keep keep your training up, right? You gotta keep the scrims up. Anyway, that's me. Look, <laughs> I ain't the best player in the world, but. I'm consistent enough to, I think, notice some of these things. H Trainer Paul says, regarding the comment about bottle caps, I think they can be implemented into Go without being too OP. My suggestion would be that it would cost X number of bottle caps, increase one stat by one point. You would obtain, on average, one bottle cap per five star raids. Uh, the number required can be up to debate to make it balance 10 or 20. You know, a consistent like factor like that would be nice. Um, I just... It's annoying Look, that it be in raids, though. Do you know what I mean? Isn't it? Well, yeah. Everyone be I, like, I, "Oh, these men don't even need it." <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> what they're doing it for? Well, well for PvP purposes, it'd be nice, right? If you could like drop yeah. the IVs. But yeah, yeah. my only hesitation with that is it slowly. That's like a very clear pay to win strategy, right? Like if you have to raid ten to get one full bottle cap, right? There's no way around it. But at the same time, too, like if it's RNG, the people that pay more are still gonna win. Oh. So. It's it's always it's kind of a factor, but um, if you got Zerud with Ivisa of 13, 15, 14, 15, you would need X number of ball caps three times to make it 100. You know, speaking of Zerud, you know what? You know what would um? Oh no, sorry, not Zerud. I'm, I think about Zygarde, but it reminded me of Zygarde. You know what would get people doing routes? If you drop bottle caps and routes. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you best believe I'm going on a route every day of the week, right? Every day. like <laughs> I'm going on routes two, twice a day if I need to, right? Like I'm just gonna walk the same route every single they do, day. They do right? have good rewards though. I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh, if, and I feel like if really, you get it to like yeah. gold, there's like elite TMs like for super yeah. rare reward. If you get it to like gold, you're like you got more chance of getting better rewards. Oh, I'm not even at gold. I'm not even at silver. Yeah. I think, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, even like the elite TMs, which is super nice <laughs> reward and very very rare. I feel like they're like it's easier to acquire these teams just from buying from a box or GBL and doing other stuff. So like people aren't as pressed about it. But if you go only get bottle caps from doing routes, people are gonna be doing it. People are gonna mm-hmm. be doing it. Um True. for the Hundo peers out there, in order to differentiate bottle cap Pokemon from a pure Hundo, when you appraise Pokemon, whether uh whatever stat you increase with bottle cap, that appraisal line can be changed to a different color to show that it was changed. Yeah. See, like aesthetically, it would look different, which would mm-hmm. be nice. Um I'm not sure if this Zeru ticket is an indication of 96 plans for monetization going forward, but I don't think Bobcats will hurt this either. For example, if you got a bad Zeru, like I did, um, 11, 11, 12, that's pretty bad. Even if Bobcats this is, it, I'd still consider getting the ticket for a chance for a, add a better one to reduce the number of Bobcats I need. 
yeah, uh, I think that's that's actually a very fair point. I think this can be implemented in a way that would benefit players, but not hurt Niantic's bottom line, since people would be incentivized to raid more often to obtain rare excels in bottlecast. Yeah, I agree. Like, I don't think bottlecast would actually hurt. Like, if you're gonna raid a lot, you're gonna raid a lot. If you're not gonna raid a lot, you're not gonna raid a lot. If you add bottlecast to raids, you might get people that don't raid a lot to raid more. But for the people that raid a ton, I don't think they're gonna raid. They're not gonna raid any less. They might raid even more. They might just be like, I'm trying to stockpile a thousand ball caps and just make everything like a hundo, make it like a lucky dex hundo dex or something, right? A lucky shundo dex, maybe even, right? Because these people, like, they have like their, like, the hardcore raiders and grinders have like a whole different, like, objective, right? Like, they're like trying to be like the heaviest raider out of the raiders, too, right? They're supposed to, like, like, you know, they're trying to grind like the most amount of dust and the most amount of like numbers on the raid badge and stuff, right? So I don't think it's really gonna stop it, but Nine Tick, I know you're listening. If you, something to think about. Something to think about. Just just saying. Could get people to raid more. T Wassell says, I think seven and eight players make top cut. All right, so we could talk about that in our EU IC section. And of course, pretty spot on. It was actually five. I was hoping it'd be six. So we could round up to ten, right? You know, you could round it up. But uh no, it was uh it was actually five. I did my part. I was one five, but um, I think the better question though is how many Europeans make top cut because there's a there's some non NA heavy hitters from outside of Europe attending. Bentusi, Hamad, uh, Saad, Munir, the twins, Mister McAlvin, and Bar the Gamer. Yeah, these are actually some. Yeah, T Wasa actually spotted some pretty. Yeah, so I guess uh, pretty three non NA, like yeah, three non NA. Bentusi, uh, Mister McAlvin, and um, a better. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Those are the only three. I think oh, so. Okay. Now, yeah. I mean, I know they were all on loser winner side, but there weren't any on loser side. Uh, well, we can take a look at that later. Besides Ventusi, all the others I named are from the Middle East. Making a top 16 placement would get them the points they need to qualify for Worlds. It would be really cool to see one or more of them do it. Hey, man. you also on, po on point there with some of the analysis. Uh, Conky says, I think it's important <coughs> to note that Riot has said multiple times over the years that their esports team for League of Legends does not generate profit for them. But they use it to market the game and get more money from in-game transactions to counteract it. It would be almost impossible for Niantic Play to imitate Riot's model because unfortunately GoPP doesn't generate the extra profits in-game to balance out the losses. Actually, yeah, so I talked about this earlier uh, with Infamous Master comments. That's already happening. Wow. TPCI is already spending money. Like, it's exactly what Riot's doing, actually, right? And not, not like to the same exact degree, but they are spending money for their esports scene and it doesn't generate profit for them. It's a it's it's a marketing thing, right? Um, in my opinion, it might be more than just a marketing. It's a brand <laughs> thing too, but like, it's a generational thing, right? Because you, you got like mm. there's so many families that go to this, right? Like we know the Fitzgeralds and whatever, right? Because from Pokemon Go, but for but but Go's still fairly young in this space, so it's like lesser known. But VG and TCG, there's a lot of families that they when they were younger and they were in college or kids, whatever. They competed in VG and TCG, and now they have kids, and they're bringing their kids to events as a family as well and going on these trips. And so, like, um, and yeah, so I, I even talked to um, uh, Richie Beckett, and he said mm, that uh, you player, uh, he's on your team actually, TMP, so right, yeah, and yeah. he was saying that um, his son uh, loves, I think he said it was VG. Oh no, his son, yeah, his son loves VG and competed in VG. BGC mm -hmm. this past weekend at UIC, right? And obviously, you know, Richard Beck was competing in Go as well, so he was already there. But he's got his son going, right? So it's become a generational thing, and that's amazing for the Pokemon brand, right? If mm -hmm. if the if the Pokemon brand stopped at our generation, the the company would die out, right? But instead, we got the younger generations involved, right? We got our you know our kids or whatever people's kids involved in this. And then they grow up playing the game. They love it. And they're going to get their kids. So it's like a generation. I mean, honestly, I would say the generational thing is even stronger than what whatever Riot's doing. Because League of Legends is like kind of like a teenager to adult game. Like, you don't got five-year-olds playing it, right? It's a little too complicated in general. And I wouldn't want, like, if I had a five-year-old, I wouldn't want them reading some of the stuff you will be typing. <laughs> <laughs> Disable all chat because they've been saying some stuff, right? I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. It's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so actually, the Pokemon company does that. Now, obviously, from a Pokemon Go PvP perspective, like Niantic, that's like, yes, maybe not generating as much profit, but that's like a very small fraction of the player base, right? 
Like you got VGC, you got TCG. United's also pretty pretty on the younger side, but my guess is a vast majority of TPCI's revenue is from the merchandise, right? Pokemon, the Pokemon Center at UIC be packed, right? Mm. Um, people will be buying oh, tons of stuff. People will be spent. Some people spend yeah. over like a thousand dollars on the Pokemon Center. Multiple yeah, people. I'm not saying one person. Multiple people. Hundreds, hundreds, even Everyone right. Just buying toys. Yeah. Yeah, like you, you think like okay, they make no money from EIC. They're spending. Wait, they're buying what? Toys. Toys. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And they have like they have new plushies come out and stuff, and people buy it. They have new different different brand stuff. They have like specific international stuff. Oh well, yeah, like you buy it now or you don't buy it <laughs> later. So people are gonna buy it now, right? Next international, they're gonna have another one, right? So there's no way you buy it all up, right? You'll never buy enough, right? You'll, you'll there'll always be stuff to buy. Honestly, there's way more money that Pokemon generates or could generate than Riot, in my opinion. Because Riot doesn't really have a lot. They make all, all their most of their money from like skins, like right. online, you know, stuff, which like costs some money. But like, dude, you see that Arcanine plushie? That thing is not cheap, right? It's more expensive yeah. than a skin from <laughs> League of Legends, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's why Pokemon, the Pokemon company, is actually, in my opinion, like a very sustainable company because they actually have physical merchandise they can mm. sell and people buy into. Yeah. Um, so do you know what honestly though that that idea of like the 99 cent battle pass and all the money going to the prize pool yeah that's one day man one no day. It, it it'd be nice but but so yeah, yeah l- like i said to the infamous mash post like this is po- like worlds regionals international know, play Pokemon. It's, like... it's a tbci initiative and like yeah, It'd yeah, be but also like, if Niantic were to partner more and do yeah. stuff, but I feel like I don't that would know. get people playing the game. Do you know what I mean? And like, who don't play Pokemon Go, they'd be like, "Yo, let me compete in Pokemon Go." Do you know what I mean? Well, they might be playing PvP, but the, I don't know if it gets more people playing Pokemon Go in general, right? No, but you kind of have to. Do you know what I mean? In it, yeah, like okay, do we we don't have to play most of the game because we've been playing for years, in it, yeah. If you're new into the game, you low key kind of have to play the rest. Of oh, it. get them into PP because they had to spend I mean? resources yeah. and had to play yeah, the game more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I don't I don't disagree. I think PP players are like some of the most avid players of the game, right? They raid. I mean, dude, factions and now Battle mm-hmm. Frontier. Yo, those two things earned. Niantic a lot of money, right? You think these masters, <laughs> master people, be waiting for Rizion that much, right? If they were, like, who's going to run a hundo for Rizion, right? You got people running hundo for Rizion, Battle Frontier, and still factions because it's so, like, look, if <laughs> Silver so Battle Frontier should have got some royalties for that one, right? Sending people over <laughs> to play these random off meta mastery picks that people typically wouldn't raid a bunch for. Yeah. Before you just raid like 20 or so and just swap a bunch until you get a good one for Ultra League and call it a day, right? Now you got people raiding like Rizion and like all this random stuff, it's true, right? It's true, yeah. E-Tran, I mean, E-Tran could be, I guess, solid in open mastery, but not that much, but um, anyway, uh, yeah, so not to say like Conky's wrong or anything. I think uh, Conky's right, but uh, what I'm trying to say is the Pokemon company is it's very analogous to what the Pokemon company is doing, um, which is I think I think the difference is Riot takes sponsors, Pokemon company doesn't. Yeah. They do collaborations. They'll do like you know collaborate like hundred thieves or merchandise or whatever. Or they collaborate um, with anyone. They'll collaborate, but they don't do sponsors, right? Like yeah. whereas like you're watching a Riot game, you're like. Oh, there's Baron's like one of the main bosses. He'd be like, right, uh, this is the uh, Red Bull Baron power play, right? They'll say it every time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but you just get used to it, right? Wait, it's just they, the name the boss of the. No, no, no. So the Red boss Bull. is named Baron, right? Baron Nasher, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. But um, but when the commenters commentate like an official game, right? If you're just playing, uh-huh. it's just me and you playing like a random like online ladder game, we're not going to call it They have Red to call Bull. him Red yeah. Bull Baron. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They don't call it Red Bull Baron, <laughs> but they, what they say is like when the Baron's taken out, it's like, oh, that's a Red Bull Baron power play of the game, right? Or something like that. They say, they say that, right? Oh, okay. Because it's sponsored, you, okay, right? So okay, they're one of the main sponsors. And like, it's actually kind of clever. The sponsors don't just like get to name the characters. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the Red Bull Baron. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not the Red Bull Baron. Yeah. I mean, outside the official tournaments, it's not the Red Bull Baron. It's just a very <laughs> random Baron. But um, but it's funny too because they have like little banners and flags in the game, like on the map uh, and stuff. And like they're not really, they don't do anything, right? Um, I think in regular games there's no map flags, but in the right. actual games, 
like they will they'll have it. So it might be like AT and T or something in the background, right? <laughs> like it's it's almost like um like a, it's almost like honestly it's like like a sporting arena or something like that, right? Yeah. Where they'll yeah, they'll yeah. be like oh there's like a logo on the ground. On the sides, or yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean NASCAR is like even more like you know like, this that's is all over the wild, place, right? Bruv. It's all you know, I've seen NASCAR, yeah, and I'm like, you got so many tattoos on you, yeah. Like if if I was a brand. I don't know that anyone would see me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, know the most funny part about NASCAR. I'm not a big NASCAR yeah. follower. I mean, I'm sure the cars are parked sometimes. But the funniest part is you're putting all these logos and brands on cars that are moving so fast in Game Arena. <laughs> <laughs> you know As I mean? say, yo, you'll be a great idea. Let's let's put the Bowcast logo on Usain Bolt's logo. <laughs> 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 oh, he's running, right? Oh, damn! What is that? Yeah, you can't even see it. Uh, or putting I mean, it yeah, like underneath an airplane, <laughs> <laughs> underneath you saying both shoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, don't uh, worry. Our yeah. logo's on his underwear. We just can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for these wrestlers, it's on their cup, actually. <laughs> Uh, our last comment said Crocodile says credit where it's due a man to his word and saying you in the Missy outfit and he said good to see you guys over the weekend yeah it was great to see you too Crocodile yeah it was are, sick do you see well, Crocodile yeah. often in um cause he's nah from the UK, cause right? well obviously I only just moved back um but prior to like when I did leave um I saw him to be honest it was um it was Worlds but also actually prior to when I did leave as well um i was only we didn't have locals yeah um like he's in kind of essex so like any in-game events he would most likely be playing i i imagine playing oh, okay. outside of london um but then also yeah prior to when i did leave it was like still the 2022 season so it was like there was very few events in it and yeah 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 makes sense like early Liverpool yeah no cups stuff, stuff. Like that, so. all right well that does it for our youtube comments um Great comments, by the way. If I ever seem like heated or anything, I'll just passion. I'm not like mad at any of the comments. Like you all, you all are great, and uh, it, it provides really good discussion, actually. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's talk about EUIC because mm -hmm. uh, it happened. Okay, I got a question. Look, look at the bracket real quick, right? Because I have yeah, a question yeah. for you: Is uh, Sammy on your team? Sammy, yeah. so, someone beat yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's Sammy from? Peru. Sammy's from Peru. Yeah. Oh, Where? they flew all the way from Peru. So, to yeah, he's like he's like studying in the UK or was studying in the UK, and then like someone I told me Sammy was at like an NA event or something too. Yeah, yeah, he goes to some NA events as well. I can't lie, but he's from Peru and he lives yeah. in the UK. Uh, he just moved to the UK recently again oh, okay. for school. Okay, so he's um, a local, but I think he's also leaving the UK again. To go in back to like Peru. September or something like that. Yeah. Oh. So that's yeah. funny because the two people that beat me aren't even EU players. <laughs> I just say it was like an NA players. So I'm like, I just lost a bunch of NA players. I flew all the way to EU just to lose the NA players. Like yeah. um I'll let you could you could take away if you want on this one. EUIC. The Europe International championships Dude, you gotta pick up the pace if this is what you got <laughs> okay time. um <laughs> you know what uh, um sick event so three obviously largest um event ever um so largest far. official event ever so, so far. far um well i mean that's kind of what you imply when you say ever right i know i know but when you say so far you don't it, makes know the it, like, it makes it like sound cool It'd be like oh like <laughs> okay, we got a bright okay. future ahead of us right <laughs> <laughs> fair enough <laughs> um and campy, honestly but... it was great i think um so yeah 319 20 people um personally i think it um like organization wise went really really well mm -hmm. um i didn't really see any issues even like you know like, um so you know improvements from last year's euic obviously last year's euic was when they had the whole you know shambles of having it all in a single day but they still um, ran it really well too. Yeah. Yeah, but it's yeah. like you know, like I said, yeah, Varney, yeah, who I think got dropped down to the losers bracket at one point, yeah, like relatively early on, right? Mm -hmm. This guy, yeah, 
in his last stream match, you could see it on his face. He looked like he like flipping <laughs> done an entire obstacle course, <laughs> like on no food and no sleep. He was dying. Yeah, I was like, bro, you're lucky to come out of this alive. Um, so you know, obviously, it's a lot nicer now. Where you know the seeding, I think, was great, aside from one or two groups. Honestly, um, there were one. Like, well, okay, when I say one was or two it groups, like I the think Colin that could be PP David out. one, like the Ventus Bruv, group? That group was that group ridiculous. was stacked. Wasn't Tom Hogg in that group too? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that group, group oh, had right? literally. Dude, like, you got Ventuski, PP David, Colin Six, so Collapsible, and Savage Boy, Tomahawk. What are uh, they doing in the same group? HK Assassin. I, I mean, I was say there's other people, but these are the names I recognize right off the yeah. bat. What are they doing in the same group? I, d- I do not understand. Well, I mean, just how seeding worked. I, I don't think, like, I mean, if you look at the seed, Colin 1C makes sense, right? Who's the 2 seed here? No, no, no. But, like, when you're Tom saying. Tomahawk 2C makes sense. No, no. Men but as in, like, yeah, sense. they're yeah they're seeding them in the group, yeah. But as in, they didn't have to have that many high, like, uh, I, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna say high seeded players because actually a few of them have been in finals already, um, in the same group. Do you know what I mean? But what if they just don't have championship points? Or they didn't do much the previous season. Because to my understanding, the seedings is based off of last season plus last season's theoretical seeding plus this season. Plus this season, yeah. But yeah, there's, a, there's enough. Like... Maybe just hasn't played in a, in a lot. That's why he's fourth seed, right? No, but Galactic maybe has... won a whole regional. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but that's it? but 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 like, but like no, I, I get you, right? But. But if you only just won a regional, uh, as wait, opposed wait, to let, someone let that like, let me find this group. Let me find this group. All right, let me let me check up Glass gonna... Bolton's history too, as, yeah, as while we're at it. It's... So thirty third in Liverpool, thirty third in Gdansk, first in Lille, and that's it for this season. Yeah, Seventh in Malmo, one twenty nine last season, and that's it. So like, there's not a lot of like game history to back it besides the one, the the number one and the seventh place finish from Malmo. Yeah, but right. those are still two like relatively big things. I think no, 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 uh, no, 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 yeah. no and like I don't, I don't disagree with you. But if you look at like, I think they come off. I'm not saying it's not, a, it's not a stacked bracket. They come off as seeming like the bracket seems even more stacked, but just because you recognize the name because you won a tournament, right? But like, if you look at, let's say, look at a okay, you know what? Let's let's great example of this. Let's look at Group N. Who's fourth seed here? Uh, Alfie, okay, well, that might not be the best, but, but I mean, any player because you know he has a lot more championship points. So, I mean, Wait, okay, how look, can you, tell, you know what? How can you I tell mean, the seed? Oh, because of the yeah, yeah, front number. You know what? Out of so. like, let's humor it, right? But I think any player's <laughs> seeding, unfortunately, is going to be a little bit higher. Yeah, so his, his doesn't look nearly as impressive, like 33, <laughs> 17, 25. Yeah, okay, anyway, let me pull up. A, this is not anyway. the best example. <laughs> let me look at a different one. All right, Amon, right? From group L, uh, right? Wait, group L, yeah. All right, okay. Amon, I know group? has. Was it your group? I don't know. Came on CC. So. Yeah, so no, 17th Dortmund, 49th Liverpool, right? 9th no. Gdansk, 17th Lil. Wait, who are you talking about? Amon. Honestly, Amon oh, right, just yeah. played in a lot more tournaments. Like, yeah. the average placement's not as high, but he has a lot more experience than Galaxy yeah. does. So, I mean, maybe in this case, then, what it would imply is that the seeding should be weighted based on super high finishes compared to just top cut but finishes. i but well, i think I they are weighted different. right um, like i think uh, like a first place is going to be weighted more than a second in like a 17th and a 33rd place but what know. i'm saying is if glass Bolton's only those. played in four tournaments yes yeah. he had a one and a seven seventh place finish or 17th place finish. yeah but you know what I, f- I feel like okay look, look, i feel like it's a safe it's a safe um <laughs> sorry i think it's a very safe like initial rule to okay look here's the thing yeah so they're you want to wait the first place like finish even more right is what you're saying yeah the, but the thing is is they're gonna have to do something similar to this for worlds right because there's not any sort of consistency I, when it comes the to world right? i like, don't understand I think how they're gonna do fine, it yeah but i think it's a fine thing it to do exactly yeah um but i think it's a fine thing to do where you be like okay cool we start with the champions yeah we give the champions and obviously you can see the champions like accordingly but like if you if you separate all the champions like in the groups yeah so you want like more waiting for the point. champions yeah i think i think that makes more sense you know um, but, well, okay then, i'll, I'll give you an example though right oh uh, let's say because no one's a champion by accident. doom Doombuck's a champion right yeah loud loud jazz both champions yeah yeah, yeah. um what's the champion that's like really not played much uh, uh, I imagine you could probably find some from the beginning of the season. 
Yeah, maybe. Um, uh, King Al Alexander. King Alexander, right? I don't know. So would you much. would you throw King Alexander in? He's a great battler, right? But he hasn't really played yeah. in too many outside of what, like Knoxville yeah. and Wadaj. You know, Wadaj just stopped playing. Well, no, no, I know, but Wadaj has a lot of accomplishments oh, okay. previous. I'm just saying, like yeah. someone that's like only just won one region. Okay, right? King Al, King Al, King Al, right? Would you weight him on the same level as Lyle Jeffs and Doombug because he's a champion? Whereas, uh, let's say, okay, so so yeah. as a con- as a counterpoint, we have, okay, we could throw my name in there or Tomahawk. Right. Both of us have never won anything, <coughs> right? Would you put King Alexander of f- f- significantly higher than us on a separate level because we're not champions? Yeah. Well, I, because I, Tomahawk, would see... I mean, I, maybe not yeah. me, but Tomahawk's played in a lot more tournaments than yeah. I have, but a, a, and even more so than King Alexander. And I'm not saying he's yeah. better than King Alexander, but you can make the argument that Tomahawk might be seated higher than King Alexander because he's had multiple second yeah. place finishes. He's top cut multiple times and he has a lot of tournament experience. Like th- it, when it comes yeah. down to it, I don't know who would I'd rather face. Would I rather face King Alexander or Tomahawk? I don't think it's that clear cut, even though King, King Alexander is a champion, right? Nah, Galaxy okay, Bowl is so, a great example look, of that, right? Galaxy Bowl. Like, would you rather face Tomahawk or Galaxy Bowl, yeah. right? But look, here's, here's what you have to do, right? So, okay, look, yeah. bear in mind the first part of the seeding, yeah, is putting people into groups, right? Yeah. So I think it's not controversial at all, yeah, to be like, okay, boom, let's start with the champions, yeah, and put one champion into each group, yeah. Once you're done with the champions, then you can tackle the rest of the seeding maybe in the same way as you but do. But you know why, I mean? why treat the champions differently? Because they're champions. Yeah, but that could have been like I mean, literally like a... But no, no, but I, I'm not to say like, not to take anything away from the champions, but there's some champions that it literally came down to game five and like a bait call. And there's yeah. other champions that straight up like swept three zero winners and grants, no bracket reset. Yeah, but you're not gonna you're not gonna come up with a perfect perfect solution anyway. Well, you know? I know, which is why which is why I think what they did is they just already weighted all the championship points or like the, your your seeding based off of championship points based on your tournament performances. <laughs> yeah, but and then you they look just, at a group like that, and well, it's well, like that's why well, I tried well, to that's make why. the comparison to another group where like like Galaxable in like as a four seed makes sense because compared to some other group of four seed. They have similar accomplishments. No, I don't know. I, 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 I don't think like like I'll, anyway, I'll the Amon right, example because because right. I think any players like there's nothing against feed, but like we just have a lot more championship points because we have a lot more. Lo- we had locals for a long time. The so. Amon example is a good example where I don't think Amon and Galaxico Bolton are on the same level. Well, Amon's played in way more tournaments than Galaxico Bolton. Yeah, exactly. What so say, uh, this is what like, I'm saying. I'm saying I'm saying they shouldn't be seeded at the same level. Well, you're you seeded in your group. Let me let me see. I, honestly, Let's I should, I was seed number two. I don't think I should be seed number two. You dumb. I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not an idiot. Oh, then <laughs> yeah. I can look. If I yeah, if I look two at, is yours, it's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah, you're seeing higher than Amon. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know what? You're the top of hawk of your group. Actually, that's wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look looking at the group though. Yeah. Why is your seeding so high? Uh-huh. Something, they're something, obviously not something. doing what I told them to. <laughs> <laughs> <It is true. laughs> ah, Mr. Coriander, what you got here? Right, seven in Melbourne, thirteen in Brisbane, four in Sydney, nine at OCIC. I mean, honestly, based on the numbers, That's your your numbers why. actually look yeah. pretty good. Like your numbers look better than Glaxo and, and Amon. Yeah, Glaxo right. second yeah. best place finishes a seventh, and that's it. You have a f- seven, four, nine, thirteen, five, and a nine at an IC. That's like why. on paper, you're a better player, but they they can only go off of your pa- like what your paper records show, right? Like what we can't go by like no. But this is what I'm saying: the paper records can differentiate champion between non-champion to make it a bit more even. Uh, I don't know. I like honestly, like if it came to it, I'm, I I don't have anyone in mind. But let's say there's like a one-off champion. Okay, mm-hmm. you know what? This person's playing more, so I'll I'll I'll, I'll name him. It's a burglar, right? Yeah. The guy that won Orlando last year, I face him any day over someone like Tomahawk, right? Who hasn't won a tournament. I face him any day over someone like Doe that hasn't even has gotten second place once, and that's it. Yeah, but uh, you're but he's also, a champion, though. <laughs> yeah, but you're yeah, but you're also making. Um, I wouldn't I, like. I think it would make less sense to say, "Oh, let's put the burglar in Group P as the number one seed. He's the last available champion, and then you know, like he wouldn't he wouldn't why? be a true number one why? seed." No, but why would okay? No, no, no. I think you're still you're still making. Like uh, what's the word? Uh, subjective decisions, yeah. In maybe a similar way to where we're just like, oh, this group is unbalanced, isn't it? Yeah, but it's like, 
if you're going to do it on paper, yeah, they're, they're yeah. seeding the things by by the results on paper, yeah, and we're looking at it and we're like, okay, subjectively, it doesn't seem even, yeah. Separate out the champions. No, no, no. But there's no downside. There's no downside. But that's not seeding. Seeding is objective. You can't subjectively do seeding. The whole point of seeding is that, that it's no, objective. No, I'm making it objective. That's what I'm saying. On but, paper, but they already, you can but they, separate out the champions. No, but you're adding a whole separate criteria, right? They already why, have a why, they already why, have yeah, a weighted system. Problem? Because because that's that's your subjective opinion that that's how it should be done. Whereas they already have a weighted system for champions. I, okay, whatever in it, whatever. Like do do the team, I, I, yeah. Look, but next it, time there's an unbalanced group, yeah, and there's like three champions in the same group, yeah. I'm gonna bring it up again, yeah. Because fine, bring on all the champions, right? It's, I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway. Meanwhile, we got um, the non-champions, the Anacor <laughs> number two spot. <laughs> <laughs> look, that's what look. i'm saying bro <laughs> right, look, maybe uh anyway. maybe don't cut yourself out maybe you just need to scrim more you would have been fine you would have been a true yeah, number probably, two seed to be honest um anyway so but, obviously but i think most of the brackets are pretty even for the most part um, yeah 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 i think most of it was good uh, um also like if you're not going to make it out of your bracket you ain't going to win eic come on now Right, there's heavy. There's way more heavy hitters in well, all yeah, the other brackets. Sure. If you ain't making it out of your bracket, of course you ain't gonna win. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Bracket, so, ain't, ain't worth crying about. You know, I'm not to say anyone's <laughs> crying about it, but I'm just saying some of the brackets yeah. did look pretty strong. But like, yeah. you know, you just got to do anyway, what you got to do. Um, but yeah, honestly, it was really sick in terms of um, like the level of competition was wild. You know. Yeah. Um, I I mean, I think it was just because there was a lot more players than worlds. That it felt like the level of competition was well. You had to play more rounds too. Yeah. So Um, like yes, like maybe your first or second round opponent maybe wasn't as like a world's caliber opponent. Yeah, but like once you get after that, it's like mad. No, I I still want to say the skill levels like comparable to worlds. I think worlds. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess because it's not. It's not. It's not even close in my opinion. But but it was. I would say arguably one of the most competitive tournaments, if not the most competitive tournament outside of worlds. Outside of worlds. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, Even worlds Um, year one was probably more competitive than this. But they're just like you barely played anyone. Year one. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I saw like dancing Rob. Most people just played like four or five opponents. That's it. Yeah. I think Axon told um, me he went like two and two or three and two to get his like top finish at Worlds season wow. one. Um, which doesn't sound as good, right? But like he was just like, yeah, there just weren't as many people to face. Yeah. So true, true. Um, but uh, yeah, but um, yeah. Generally, I think it was sick. Um, it was also really nice to see people as well. It's not like for me, this was my first um. EU yeah, event. accident. Sorry, went went three and two at Worlds. Yeah, first year, and he finished seventh place. So there just weren't that many people to play. That's true. But uh, yeah, it was a it was a good event. And Miwido took it all the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me insert a clip for you all because me and Anika recorded something right before the grand finals. <laughs> right before, not even grand finals, losers finals and winners finals started. So we had the top three of San <laughs> yeah, right before day uh, three. Dune and. Um, Emmy Wido, but uh, let me insert that clip right here. All right, who do you think takes it all the way? All right, obviously, I'm backing my boy Emmy Wido, yeah? Be realistic here. Realistically, <laughs> Dunebug should have gone ages ago, yeah? So I don't know what he's still doing here, but Emmy Wido, he's got this. All right, yeah. I think it's between Emmy Wido or Dunebug, but I think I think uh, taking Emmy Wido twice in a, in a grand finals reset might be tough. But uh, I think if anyone could do it, it'd be Doombug. Yeah. Right. But he won't do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Doombug's kind of wild. Me, but... People will also be throwing a little bit against him, too. So. Yeah, it's true, it's true. We'll see. Our last NA hope. <laughs> and you can see Anacor made the correct prediction here. But I mean, you were going to say Emmy Weedle either way, right? This is, this is the, you got to yeah, root for I the team. going to win, bro. <laughs> I knew he was going to win. Uh, but yeah, that's also true. I was never going to say Doombug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If um, Doombug was your teammate, you were at Doombug. Uh, I would have been conflicted. No, but you yeah, wouldn't have. Come on, you would have said yeah. Doombug. <laughs> that's, that's like, I would have been conflicted captain? about an American coming <laughs> to Conflicted about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ancient power can only um, take it. They could, they have, to, <laughs> have to get what they can get, right? On their team. <laughs> I uh, would have been conflicted. But um, yeah, man, it was amazing. Um, honestly, okay, one thing to, and I think everyone can note that, is um, how amazing Skeledurge looked all weekend. Um, it did look pretty good. 
Wish yeah, cash, and it's like, did you have Wishcash huh? on your team? Me, no. I Wishcash felt like trash. I had one. It's so, yeah. it, I feel, I don't know why. It's so much hard to use in this meta. I mean, I feel in like. In a meta where Lancer is more common. I don't understand. Yeah. Is it like because of the Altarias? Is it Altaria? <laughs> I don't uh, know. I mean, I only face one Altaria, what but. Are the I would... It's like Altaria. I don't know. Maybe people Mana are a bit more like wise about it. the. Uh, well, you know I'm what? I'm just actually, trying to think why the... why Wishcash is bad this season compared to last season. Last yeah, year, I season. mean, if you look at if you look at the um, like, let's say for the example, the top cut, right? Most yeah. people did have something like an Altaria or a Mandibuzz. Oh well, um, yeah, yeah, everyone needs to have. And a you had a lot check. of dragons, whereas like the so those are like hard Wishcash checks, obviously. But like then you had a lot of dragons, where it's like the dragons are like kind of neutral to Wishcash, often like positive. And then you had a lot more Cresselia as well. And like Cresselia yeah, just has a better I think matchup Cress might have been the, part of it. The Lickitung has, um, you know, you got things like Annihilate, Glygar. It's just like there's a lot of neutral play, right, for mm-hmm. Wishcash. But then you've got more, there's more like on the neutral spectrum, they're like, not more towards the negative, but kind of more towards the negative where it feels like, oh, do I really want to bring this over something else that's, that's on my team, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, I, I don't think, I don't think Wishcash is necessarily, necessarily bad. I mean, Wishcash was still on a lot of teams, so let's be fair, but yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it didn't feel like as necessary of, as like a Gligar. I feel like last season, it was like Gligar, Wishcash, Lickitung were like necessary trios, mm-hmm. especially the double ground. But now I don't yeah. think it's as much, which is weird because yeah. like Lantern's picking up in usage. Yeah, I'd say the two big things are Dragons and Crest. But where were Dragons and Crest last season? Um, Nightlip was already around. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Where was Azu last se- uh, this season? You know, just disappeared. Uh, and yeah, it has I think Azu's season. dropped in usage partially because of the uptick in Lantern. Yeah, but the I thing think is, a lot of it's just like think? I feel like a lot of it's just like expected meta changes because of for alligator because but no one brings <laughs> yeah. for alligator yeah. besides like two people in like a top thirty two right like yeah. it's like it's so weird like I feel like the meta shifted a, a decent amount but like for no reason like the the reason shifted is not real a real reason because for alligator is not really that meta relevant you know it's so Big odd for alligator is yeah if you look at everything here like nothing nothing got buffed right in this top thirty two yeah. outside of the for alligator right. Yeah, um, yeah, pretty much. What really? Yeah, there's nothing changed at all. Yeah, it's, it's not like Skelders wasn't around last season. I don't know. It's weird. And electric type wise, it's like you know you can't really say uptick in Lantern because like yeah, but every team did have. It's every way, team no, it's definitely way more than a, last season. No, no, but the thing is, every team had a um, an anti flyer. So whether that's Reggie Steel or Charger Bug, yeah. So it's like realistically, you're losing that matchup as a new zoomer anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. There's a there's an increased use of Lantern compared to last season, and there's a drop in Wiscash usage, at least in Top Cut. Maybe yeah. not on day one, but like successful teams. Yeah. I, I barely use it myself. Um, also, I think Shadow Magna Zone. Oh, my days, bruv. You think it's good, or do you think Paul Osh is just good? She's good, but the thing is, at the same time, right, is uh, obviously she's good. Yeah, there's no there's doubt. There's a decent amount of people that use Shadow oh. Magna Zone on top of that, but she's the only one that made Top Cut with it um yeah but okay so if you look at like her games right um she yeah, was need to shield man <laughs> yeah 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 but the thing is is yeah when you look at her games right it's just, like she's wild charging yeah and i mean if you look at some of these teams unless you've got something like a whiskash and maybe i don't, I don't know how much a whiskash necessarily takes from a wild charge yeah yeah a quad no, would be a nothing wants though. to take a wild charge it's actually is that yeah quad is a you know, what about charger bug does charger charge bug win or lose that matchup because Charger Bush actually um, is fairly bulky, but they're both throwing resistant attacks all the way throughout. Yeah. Right? But the thing is, it's like, even if you just wild charge and dip, yeah, it's like even a Lickitung doesn't want to eat that. And then if you've got no, two supportive you. Pokemon behind that, then it just puts your opponent in such a tricky situation because they're like, okay, well, this is going to do a lot of damage. So this is technically a good shield. But then if I give up the shield, I'm now at a shield disadvantage. What do I do now? Do you know what I mean? Charger Bug wins all yeah. even, so... Charger Bug wins the two shields after shielding two mirror shots and tanking a wild charge. Um, maybe this is why you should run Charger Bug over Lantern. <laughs> maybe. But then also equally, it's like, okay, look, look, wild charge does about 50% to a Charger Bug. So again, it's also a very safe play to just wild charge and dip, you know? Um, yeah. And then leave the, um, you know, 
get your um i think there's almost a similar um way to how emmy weedle was playing the skeletage right ish where it's like okay cool just dip out yeah and then come in for a farm down later on yeah and then just throw that energy again in it and it's just like it's really offensive and really um really it does have it does have really good typing for sure you just need to like it's honestly the wish cash and the annihilate how strong was she into annihilate (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, even she, annihilate had, doesn't want had... to take a wild charge so it's like if you get those no, shields no, I down know, and I you're know, coming yeah. with energy then you know you're again in a sticky situation so it's like unless you call that lead and you get that lead correctly and then even if you do call the lead yeah if you let yourself get farmed down it just puts you in a very sticky situation so okay okay I, I I, okay so i i get what you're saying would you run it yourself uh i'd entertain it yeah 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 because i feel I like it's looks good but again like it's hard to run. It's I'd really want to try it out just for that like specific like, way of playing. I think more people are willing to try it now that Paul Asher made a deep run with it. Yeah. My prediction is no one else makes that far of a run with it. Outside maybe like a very small regional. Uh, I think it's possible. I th- but I think, um, I think it's still a very valid strategy. It's almost like Charizard, you know? I mean, it's not exactly the same Charizard, as Charizard. I don't, I don't get the Charizard hype still. I don't personally but, get it. No, but this is what I'm saying in it. Like the thing is with Charizard, you mean the old like, Charizard or Charizard in this current meta? Oh no, the old Charizard. The old oh Charizard. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree yeah, with yeah. you there. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like, Charizard now. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. And it's like I think this is one thing that um, is good for the game as well. Yeah, it's like recognizing um, a different level of strategies, right? So it's it's very easy to just go in with like, oh yeah, this is all bulky and play like that. Yeah, but there's also merit to like hyper offensive strategies like this yeah. as well. Um, and so certain like fringe Pokemon can actually be viable, but if they're used right, do you know what I mean? And, you know, you have to obviously be like, yeah, to use it. Uh, you I, have I'm to just also more identify the, wing conditions like that as well. I'm you know? more of the thought process. This is more pilot than, than car. I but, would it's say a de- half, it's half, decent though. car, yeah. but it's a much better pilot. Yeah. But I, I think like, I think they kind of go in, in tandem, right? Because it's like. What do you, you mean? Know, okay, let's say, for example, if she... Look, I'll make Atlanta. the analogy here. Anyone else running the Bastion, they're not going to run it as well as me. Like, I, I like yeah, I, I did really well with Bastion, but, like, it's not going to be the next meta-breaking thing. Yeah, but you know what? I, th- I think that good. also has uh, has the same... Um, it's similar uh, vibes, right? Because it's like... No, because it, it like, it's like, because you know it so... Because you're good enough and you know it so well, yeah, you're able to, like... Um, optimize it's like strong suit if that's what I'm, uh, if you no, know no, i know Do you know what i mean well that's what yeah. that's what i'm saying that's yeah. why i understand this situation so well in my opinion is that mm. it is it's because paul lasha knows the matchups and knows how to use it so well and i don't I, what i'm saying is i think it's really hard to replicate that i think it was a really genius mm. pick by her but she also played really well i just think i like okay for instance if like, I have some friends going to Orlando this weekend, and they're competing. Yeah. I would never recommend them to run Shadow Magnus. Yeah, yeah. Because I know there's no way they could run that fast enough, right? And I, I would also, <laughs> in the same similar vein, I wouldn't recommend them running Bastion, right? Whereas yeah, Skeldurge, a little bit easier to figure out, I think, right? True, a, true. Little, a lot easier to pilot you know, over the other two, right? Uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Over the other two, yeah. Yeah, over the other two. I mean, maybe not the yeah. easiest. I don't know. Skeletors, I think, I mean, the way Emmy Weedle played it, it made it seem like it was pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> I think the thing is with Skeletor, though, is that, and then also, I guess, any other, um, any other, like, so like Talonflame, for example, is um, knowing when to do good timing and knowing when to just when to throw, you know what I mean? To, yeah. you know? And also, like, knowing when to um you know like weight or stuff like that in it so i think i think navigating around incinerate is the main benefit of like using yeah. skill well know similar for magnuson too right because you're using four turn move so exactly similar, yeah, similar yeah, yeah so it's a similar sort and then also with magnuson you've got things like you know waiting to take the damage before while charging mm-hmm. you know stuff like that in it um so yeah yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, like if you have good technical play, I feel like you can get the most out of it. Good technical play, I, I think for these Pokemon, you, it requires, yeah, good technical play, but then also good, um, like, identification of wing conditions and, like, foresight, do you know what I mean? Because I feel like you need to be able to see mid-match being like, okay, maybe I've lost the lead, but there's a way I can take this back. Or, like, yeah. I've got into wild charge range, or this is now in range where my losing matchup in the back is no longer a losing matchup you know things like that 
Or you could just run a meta team like Doombug. <laughs> and make or you could just run a meta team. Like I know a lot of people that were like that watching that weekend, they just ran Doombug's team at a cup and they like won it and stuff too. Yeah. The biggest reason is Doombug's teams, I feel like, is Cresselia. Cause, so I was looking at Doombug's team from mm. Knoxville, the last tournament he won. Oh. And I think it was the last tournament he played in too. He ran the same exact team except he swapped out Charge Bug for Lantern, which makes right. him the biggest difference is it makes him a lot weaker to Lan- uh, Cresselia. Yeah, which I mean, we I think had, also his um, Sandu had actually he, too. Yeah, he was also pretty losses. weak to uh, Altaria as well. Like I would bring Altaria yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah, definitely, team. definitely a little bit um, weak. But Altaria doesn't like really steamroll anything either. Um, but yeah, true, but but, but Emmy Weedle having times. Altaria as well yeah. as a Cresselia made him. Yeah, that was like a yeah. that was a tough matchup because because both. And it also felt totally. like it felt like um against. Like it felt like against Emmy Weedle, Doombug couldn't really bring that scam. Um, he didn't so, bring a like, decent amount though. He couldn't. He didn't bring Lickitung much. And the one time he did, he got it locked onto a Vigoroth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> I mean, was... it's. I mean, the the team building from Emmy Weedle is really solid here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he ran Shadow Alone, Sandslash, <laughs> Cresselia, Altaria, Skeldurge, and Vigoroth, and Lantern. Was it Powder Snow or Shadow Claw? Shadow, Shadow Claw. Claw. Yeah. And yeah. then Moonblast, Cresselia, obviously. But um, yeah. you definitely need a Moonblast. There's so much mana buzz. Honestly, Emmy Weedle's team was super weak to mana buzz. Uh, uh, I mean, it wasn't like super weak, but mana buzz had a ton of play. Like nothing resists the Yeah, moves. but you know what? The thing is, again, yeah, against the teams, because he played um, at least one person on stream who had mana buzz, right? And um, who was it? it was just like coming in with that skeleturge and throwing disarming voices yeah 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 do you know what i mean and it's turning like really really and truly if you look at the mandibars yeah your only good matchup is chrysalia and then the rest of them i would call neutral do you know what i mean that's true or like neutral oh well, i'd rather be the mandibars than the skeleturge but i see your point but do you know what i mean innit? yeah like you've got more neutral play where it's like is that really what's the weakness true? on his team uh honestly i don't know I don't know. <laughs> it's mad, yeah, because actually he uh he had this team like prepared. Oh, you know like what a it is? Month ago, um, Claude Sire is actually pretty good in this team. <laughs> yeah. Claude Sire is real good. Beats the Vigorot, beats the Lantern, beats the Skeldurge, beats the Altaria. I think beats the Cresselia because yeah. he's not running Future Sight. But he yeah, doesn't. I mean, that's that's good. that's a fine weakness to have though, right? Because how many people are yeah, actually running Claude exactly. And like, it's all it's like you can like kind of top around that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah um but yeah he had this team ready like over a month ago um and actually did, ages ago i think i think he, he had the you, same team ready when i was still in australia brother, this huh? team instead of my team <laughs> oh because i don't know no, i just uh, i i didn't think about it <laughs> i didn't also know what he was going to use in it but I just like looking at it now i'm like oh it's the same team that he was using ages ago yeah, um, if um you're all looking at the graphic on the screen right now, so if you'll notice, <laughs> so I had a team of Dugon, Bastion, Mana Buzz, Shadow Wish Cash, and I live in Charge Bug. There's one other Bastion that made top cut, top 32. Only one other one. <laughs> and it was Young Kaz. Is this Young Kaz? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Kaz, I think. Yeah, yeah, young yeah. Kaz? Okay. Yeah. Um, People were pronouncing it weird on stream. I was just like, am I? Yeah, Young Kai. Young Kai? <laughs> I was like, bro, I was like wait, is it Young Kai? I've been saying this wrong the whole time. Yeah, and it's mad because this guy like, could have sworn think... you said Young Kai or something on uh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. the on the podcast. I was like, yeah. Young Kai. I was like, oh dang. I was like, I started getting, I felt a little self conscious. Like, I was like, I was like, man, I haven't been saying his name wrong the whole time. <laughs> and the thing is, it was it was inadequate to like made the mistaken pronunciation yeah and you know zionic's not gonna <laughs> Dude, you know, this guy... so I was like, oh that's how you pronounce it I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. here we go <laughs> let me say but, it worse yeah. but, i mean to be fair again like it could have been like someone in production that just gave the phonetic pronunciation wrong bro right? what going with production and doing this like really i don't bad know thing? well but the pronunciation the though is also they anyway. asked the players yeah so it might also be on your brother's end that he might have just said it differently yeah, i don't know <laughs> I mean, they, I, I don't know. I don't know how it goes because they always ask me. I just say Caleb, and there's never, there's never like a question about how do you phonetically yeah, pronounce yeah, that, right? Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. Actually, like when they actually have a name that is hard to pronounce based on reading, it, and yeah. they ask it, oh, yeah, just like doing it, winging it, you know. Yeah, um, G Zone Nine and Young Kai, but uh, yeah. so anyway, uh, so, so <laughs> but, we talked um, about this in previous episodes before, but <laughs> so Anacor's brother, 
Yeah. Tell me the story, right? Yeah. Tell, tell, tell the audience the story <laughs> on what happened okay, on that so Thursday like, night before the tournament. Yeah. So I've often said that like my brother's a better player than me, yeah, but he just doesn't play the game, right? Um, and I think it's like... Dude, he's know, way taller than you too. What the heck? I'm glad yeah, I'm not boxing yeah. him. I'm boxing you. How'd that happen? <laughs> I don't know. We've just you got, didn't like, eat your coriander growing up. What's going on? Like, yeah, apparently not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, that, then again, yeah, he definitely didn't. So I don't know. Um, but um, yeah. So basically, like, I, I always he's like a better player than me, like naturally, but he just doesn't play the game. Yeah. Um, and you know, every time he goes into an event, he's just like, he's like, yo, I need a team, yeah. And I'm like, usually, I'm like, okay, cool, take my team in it, yeah, because I really believe it's like a really good team um funnily enough actually at liverpool he took your team as well <laughs> <laughs> really Wait, i didn't yeah. look up his trick of his graphic yeah, in liverpool yeah, he, he didn't say that when well. we were at dinner um and he actually had like a really he had like an early loss but uh -huh. then he made a decent like losers bracket uh well no he had a pelper on his team this is not on my team oh was that the does he have a bastion on, on that one he did have a bastion on but he had a pelper oh i think maybe it was your team but like a slight variation then i guess yeah um, i guess so but um yeah so literally <laughs> thursday night he's like yo i need a team yeah and normally i would be like okay cool you can take my team in it but mm -hmm. i you know I, I i feel like my team was fine but i also don't feel like uh, i feel like one um it was fine for me because i was using it for a decent amount but then also two i don't think like i don't think it was like the best team he could have gone in with right yeah so I was like, honestly, you can take this, yeah, but I don't think it's like fully so. Like, I think maybe you could make it into slightly a safer version, but I don't know. And it was like, yeah, what's Caleb running then? <laughs> 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 so so I sent him your team, and he just looks in your team, yeah. So then it's. Yeah, I didn't have the moose that, set. He didn't know I had Night Slash on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, he he probably assumed that you had Night Slash. Well, I think it's okay to assume that I have Ice Punch. Ice Punch would also make a lot of sense. So my team's a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but I think it's right? everyone, everyone assumes like Night Slash and Annihilate these days anyway. Uh, um, is like the main reason right yeah. so it's like and then before his first match he realized that he'd accidentally locked in ice punch because he just copy pasted <laughs> the same annihilate from liverpool so <laughs> he went in with ice punch and it actually won him games they won him some games it's pretty good and honestly you know what i'm not gonna lie in it yeah like i think um dude he'd be he's... telling me he's like oh i faced the point i was five times weak to bassy i was like where was that at my bracket, right? He was facing, he was like rolling through people with Bastion. Yeah. Even the Noski team, who he faced in winner's finals on day number one, was pretty weak to Bastion. Yeah. And it was like those two, honestly, the first game, I don't know like, if he could have done anything. The second game, he definitely I don't misplayed. Think he the yeah, game, the, the, the second was game, like, it was was, you can't course, give him a switch yeah. advantage with. Yeah, well, no, yeah. it wasn't even that. He could have just one switch before that even happened, right? That's true. He could have yeah. just stayed in, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But, uh, but um, fine, I mean, he didn't scrim with it. So, yeah. I think also like the in in terms of his day two match, the thing is is that we were chatting about it before he had the match, right? Yeah. And we were like, okay, this is what you do. Um, and I think it was, you, you know, uh, maybe you don't, you know, the ones where you like you kind Tommy? of, yeah, you kind of like lose your. Uh, oh, he had the Clotsire. Clotsire is super annoying for his team. Yeah, but you know what? Okay, so here, here was what I was telling him, right? I was like, yeah. okay, he, you know, he was like, oh, you know, he's like multiple time weak to Bastille. I was like, yeah, fair enough. He was like, okay, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead Charger Bug because Charger Bug's good into most teams. Yes, likely he might lead the Claude Sire. But <laughs> yeah, then you, you can't check like, no I'll dip there. <laughs> no, no, but then he was like, okay, I'll safe switch with Cash. Uh -huh. yeah have a nihilate in the back and i was like that's perfect because with whisk cash you're either going to take switch or you're going to take advantage and once you've got advantage your annihilate is going to be everything whether it's azu whether it's the clod side it doesn't that's matter that's a great right? plan yeah, though well, how, how did he lose that yeah which cash safe because he no didn't shot. safe switch the whisk cash he safe switched the annihilate <laughs> what wait wait, what? Yeah. wait why, why did he deviate from the pl game plan i don't understand. i don't know i don't know uh, <laughs> like wait, don't so know, that so... happened in one game what happened in the other game and then the next game, I guess, like, the thing is, is, like, for the next game, I, I can't remember what happened in the next game in it, but, yeah. like, for the next game, well, I was, like... does actually look pretty strong to that team. It's, yeah. like, feast I was, like, look, though. the thing is, if you lose, if... Uh, I was, like, if you win the first match, yeah, because I was, like, this is a solid, like, um, strategy. It's I think there's no way you can lose that. Because also, apparently, Hikami was, like, telling him, he was, like, yeah, I think I win this either way because, you know, even if you came in with the whisk cash, I would, like... Or he was, like, even if you didn't lead the charger bug, I'd, like, safe swap this and then 
yeah. um, you know, farm down with the Claude side. And I was like, I was listening to their game plan. I was like, no, nah, that still loses to like <laughs> yeah, annihilate yeah. up energy. Like, well, <laughs> Claude side no farming anything down that. doesn't really seem like a great idea. Claude side's not gonna, like, wait, like, you're gonna let your you're gonna <laughs> let your charger go bug get, dude, like the Claude side farm down might be slower than a Registeel farm down. Like, you know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, the guy obviously didn't have like a solid plan, uh, like compared to our plan, which was a shame. But yeah, um, and I was like, look, if you win the game one, yeah, then you have like free reign to bring in Basti because then you either auto auto win game two, yeah, or you go to game three and then you just kind of oh, run Hikami it. Hikami like, made it pretty way. far too. Uh, yeah, Hikami made it pretty far. And honestly, who, who was uh, Hikami's like next two opponents? Would they have been uh, steamrolled by Basti? Uh, Let's so Giopi uh, and okay. Jamie McElwin. Let's see. So yeah. Giopi had Giopi, Giopi had... was similar to Hikami being like, dude, ah, Giopi and kind of Jamie me. both had clots. <laughs> Your brother yeah. was fated to battle three clots sires in a row. <laughs> yeah, if he, yeah, if he would have gone, and then Pablo yeah. Dinas was the person yeah. that took, yeah, there was no clots. I probably that's kind of wild though. <laughs> that, yeah. There wasn't that many clots. <laughs> sires. there was what four. And he would have faced three <laughs> yeah. out of four. <laughs> exactly. That's too funny. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I was I was pretty happy with how he did regardless, you know. Um, oh, yeah, he stole my team. And I was just like, dang, dude. I was like, <laughs> and he's in the winner's file. I was like, I'm not doing something right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and honestly, um, uh, the funny thing is as well is that like after every event, yeah, he does semi-decent with zero prep. And then he's like, he's like, you know what? I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go for it, yeah. And then two days later, he just like gets demotivated again. Yeah. Probably would, yeah. So I, I'm. I, but the thing is, I think he's now like because he's got enough points from this where he's like actually pretty close to qualification. He I think go? he's actually a bit more committed. Um, well, we've got like locals and stuff happening, and then also we're going to Bologna. So, um, I think with all that, it should be fine. You know? did you, I'm even did going you buy to buy like, tickets so, already because the world states are out. Yeah, I know. So basically, he gets some like two for one ba deal in it so i think he's sorting it um but uh, i think we're gonna was BA deal uh british airways yeah it's uh, like something okay, to do with his credit card or something like that, yeah gotcha, gotcha. um but um oh, so yeah honestly I'm, uh, <laughs> you better hope he qualifies then so you get the two for one yeah, deal. yeah. yeah. <laughs> i think i think it will go anyway honestly but like if he's that close to qualifying he might as well just buy it now like the odds of him not qualifying is pretty slim yeah yeah i think he is he is uh gonna buy it now as dude well. let me or if like, he's running right. bastion worlds yeah. Let me show you the way, man. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to do that. Pat, hey, hey, you never know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> he will. He got all his points with Bastion on, so maybe he won. For sure, yeah. Um, Liverpool, too. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like he knows how to run it. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I guess so. Uh, um, but, yeah, I think, um, like, because I'm, like, close-ish to thinging, yeah? So I was like, okay, let me look at locals, yeah, because I've only ever done yeah. one local. And, like, there's this local on Friday, which is, like, it's Friday... 6 p.m. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm not working. Yeah, right. I can go down there, no problem. <laughs> right, okay. Can anyone else go down there? I don't think so. So <laughs> I'm just gonna like oh, snipe shit. these little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to report back next little. week, and when I find out you didn't get a single point from Friday, that's gonna make you look yeah, even worse, points. right? Yeah, yeah. Get points. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, I'm I like it's cool because like now there's like. Um, over the next couple months, there's like a few cups here and there. Unfortunately, yeah. there's like there's a lot of things which are happening during the times where I've actually got things on. So, for example, I've got my friend Stag do yeah, um, and it's on the Saturday, and then Sunday morning there's a cup challenge double yeah yeah in another seaside town. But the thing is, even though it's like here, right, you have to go up to London if you're if you're going by train, you have to go up to London and then down. Oh, they, what? They can't yeah. go the uh, like the high pot news. What the I heck is that? I guess they haven't done. Yeah, they haven't done one like train heck? wise. I guess. Uh, I guess why would you, like, right? Car. You know, why would you want to? You know, because I feel like if you live in those kind of places, you probably have a car anyway. So it's like it doesn't make as much sense to. Have can a you train hitch a ride or something and... from someone? Or oh, I don't think anyone's going there realistically. Uh, well, who's going from my, like my mate Stag do to uh, a cup in the seaside town? You know I mean? No, like, try to recruit one your mates. Uh, to pretty do sure it. no. One. <laughs> Um, and then it's like um, Stockholm Regional. I was like considering it a bit because actually the flights are super cheap. So yeah. the flights from London to Stockholm return are yeah. about forty pounds. What, dude? Yeah, why are you doing it? <laughs> yeah. Sign up. Well, that weekend is also uh, one of my other friends getting married in Greece. So. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said yeah. you're going to Greece, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I was even. I'm not gonna lie though, yeah, because it was like she's getting married the weekend before, but then we're spending a week, yeah. And then I was looking at like 
I was looking at flights from like Greece to Stockholm. You know? I was like, oh, maybe there's a way, but no, no, you should cool. see the flights for NAIC. Um, it's a one. It's the final tournament before Worlds, and the only tournament before Worlds yeah, that, that has like the actual money meta. Money. Yeah, that's, unless that's you, a big waste unless of money. Unless you earn it back, you you can win it, right? Yeah, or do well. Flight I'm not, you know what, honestly, I'm not that committed into this season. Like, obviously, I'll I'll go to these like locals and stuff just to get my qualification, but I'm not that committed into this season. I'd rather like start prepping for next season. Really, um, I'm, I'm like semi committed into yeah. this season, but not fully. You know? Oh no, after UIC, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm feeling it. I'm like, you're fully, I, fully committed. Yeah, well, not fully committed in the sense that like I was really going to try to qualify worlds, but um, yeah. the thing is like, if I win a regional, I don't think I'd be satisfied. I think before I was like, if I win a regional, I'm like, eh. I'm good, right? No, but no, now I'm like, yeah. no, no, no. I, I'm like, no, it's not about that. But I'm just, I don't know. I'll still commentate. I'd still rather commentate over like competing. But like, I would rather, like, winning an IC is a very different accomplishment than a regional, right? Like, a regional yeah. is like a different story. Yeah. When you see that scale, when you see that scale of the IC, it's insane, man. Like, yeah. there's, uh, there's no doubt you're the best. Yeah. If you're winning something. Like I felt that, real good man. when I beat Axon that I lost like five minutes later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your your so match against people... Axon was sick because if I remember correctly. Did you watch like... it live? You were yeah, yeah. And if Did like, you think again, I was going to win? Like, <laughs> about I think, bruv, I, th I think you were in like a losing position in one of the games. And I the was first like, game, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. double baited me with Dragon Claw. Yeah. Yeah, it was insane. I was locked in. Well done. I felt good. I felt yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was watching my my teammates were on Discord. They posted screenshots of yeah. the Twitch predictions, and they're like eighty nine percent X and eleven percent me. <laughs> and they all went like like points for me. They're like, oh, thanks for the channel points, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So upset. I I will yeah. say though. I mean, if you look at Axon's team, like I I think I think I had a team comp advantage. I would say. Uh. So the charger yeah. bug was fairly strong. Into he said he afterward he said he didn't expect me to bring it, but in my opinion, charger bug's pretty strong. Like yeah, loses yeah. the dragon air and whisk cash, but my whole again, plan was but just the shadow whisk cash is way better because it's like two X's and it pretty much KO. You know. Yeah, he has a shield. Um, um and then also my mandibles is super strong. Pretty, yeah, it just it's uh I knew he was going to have I knew he had a red seal in that first game in the back. <laughs> There's no way he didn't because he needs something yeah. for the mandibles. Um and then. Annihilate is super strong on his team too. Say swap if he doesn't have Charizard, and that's exactly why I did game two because I figured he wouldn't bring it game after game one. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Smart. Yeah, I remember yeah. game one too. He could have caught my discharge on his Charizard in the end, and I just thought I was like, "You gotta be patient. Don't let him do it. Like Axon will do this on you. Don't do it, right? <laughs> Can't let him embarrass you in front of the whole world." <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a great time though. That was my first time actually ever battling him too outside like yeah. ATL. So uh, what even in like outside of the circuit? Yeah. Like, uh, I, mean, GBL, I, bat like, I, I battled him GBL, but uh outside of the circuit, I've only battled like, him. Or anything like that, or only ADL or oh, oh, Aero Draft oh, okay. League. That was it. And I remember specifically he caught a thunder he say swapped his he didn't say swap, he swapped to catch a move from my lantern on his shadow Gligar. Or, or, or maybe it was Gliscor at the time because it wasn't Gligar, it was in buff. Yeah, yeah. He caught a Thunderbolt. I could have easily thrown Surf. I was running, mind you, a water gun lantern too. I ran a water gun lantern, I'm pretty sure. And he, yeah, and that's when he caught it. I was like, dude, I'm out of my league. Like, I, I remember when that happened. I was like, this is absolutely wild. Like, he, he swapped on a water gun lantern with a ton of energy and caught a Thunderbolt, right? Of all things. That's wild. Oh God, yeah, so I definitely need some nice redemption. Team. I felt good, and I just lost on your Frank, who I had a chance yeah. to beat him actually. Uh, let me play out play out the scenario for you, because you can see Onion Frank's team. His his lantern and polygraph are both really strong to my team. Both of them beat four things on my team. I think the Altari beats four things as well. Like it was just uh, yeah. he had a he he definitely had a team comp advantage. But game one, in true Onion Frank fashion, he goes ABA weak to Dugong, Shadow Glycar and lead Altari <laughs> in the back. I lead Dugong. And he's shielding, he's saying it. I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> like I got a freebie win. And of course, you know, I, I just won that one pretty flat, straight out, uh, yeah. straightforward. And then game two, I ran, I ran, um, what was it? I ran Charge Bug, Mandibuzz, and Dugong. And he ran an Altaria in the lead into my Charge Bug. So I'm like, I can't really safe swap the Mandibuzz into it. So I throw a Discharge, I bring in the Mandibuzz, he stays in and throws a Moonblast. I shield it. And I throw Dark Pulse, and, I, and then an Air Waste. I take out his, his Altaria. So now I have one switch. I give a shield, right? I'm like, what the heck does he have back? He comes in Polyrath 
into my Mandibus. Now, if you look at his team, what do you think he has on the back? If he comes in poly Shadow Polyrath into my Mandibus after I took out his Altaria and he saw the charge bug in the lead. Uh, it's not like a trick that, question. Like just obviously, like like, like what, yeah. like based on what, based on the gameplay so far. What, what would you, what would you Probably think? Like Gligo, I guess. Right. Yeah. Right. Because because yeah. you can't really. I mean, you could counter. He could have counter swap Polyrath into my Mandibus, but like definitely not Gligo, right? And like also like I had the charge bug, so like he has another check for my Gligar. so it brings it in. I obviously let my Polyrath, uh, my Mandibus go down. He shields, so we're on one shield apiece, but he has a bunch of energy on his Polyrath. He comes in, and he throws a Scald on my Charge Bug. I'm like, well, it's Gligar on the back, right? And his, and his like, Wrath was kind of low, too. So, like, he couldn't stay in for it. So, I just tanked the Scald. Does a ton of damage. I'm like, whatever. I have the Gligar on the back. Uh, I have the Duga on the back for the Gligar. He comes in Cress into my Charge Bug. I was like, what? So, I throw the <laughs> X-Scissor, right? I don't remember if he shields it or not, but I'm debuffed too from the skull. I come in Dugong, <laughs> and my Dugong, like, I just can't, like, I'm behind that energy as well. Is he well. future side or Moonblast, did you say? Moonblast, Moonblast, um, um, yeah, Moonblast Grass on. I was like, if I shield my Charge Bug, I just win, right? There's no way he could take out my, like, full health Charge Bug with this Crest and probably like, even because he's down energy and he's, you know, yeah. even he's up a shield. But in my mind, I was like, this makes no sense. What is he doing? His only Charge Bug answer, he just let go off the. Straight up in the front, but Unifrag plays super weird, so like that's like threw me off completely. And the game three, I just got like I just got hard calls on my line, but I was like, damn. But then I go home to the hotel because I just took a nap and I see this clip trending of Unifrag being one shot from a manga zone on stage, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. wow, that could have been me. So <laughs> I'm kind of maybe I'm glad that maybe I saved yeah. myself there because he was like. Oh, I was like, I really need to win. I'm, you know, feeling really good and stuff. And then, like, I find out he just goes 0-2 <laughs> right after that. Yeah, uh, that was wild, man. I think also why like, didn't he shield? Too... Did he just think it was a? Ba he just made a hard call on it. Like, what's? You know he what had the two thing shields. is? I feel like I feel like game one, right? I I didn't watch his games. I just saw that clip, but I was just like, yeah. Oh. I, 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 okay, if I remember correctly, yeah, I feel like game one he made a no shield call, yeah, and it was a bit like. Okay, I kind of understand why you would do that early, yeah? yeah? Because you're like, you know, you're thinking like, oh, these are top players. They're going to yeah. try and bait me. Do you know what I mean? And but yeah, like, like the, the, you know, if you look at his team, like it, once the polyrath's going, you have no fast stack pressure on that man magnet yeah. zone. She so this is the thing. Game two, <laughs> game two, yeah, he goes and he throws on alignment to <laughs> yeah. give the uh, magnet zone an extra volt switch, yeah? And really, it's just like, it's like, but why why would you take that risk right in the beginning yeah when you're already down why he, what what is the benefit of taking he that doesn't, risk he doesn't and then know he goes his and like makes no shield calls huh he doesn't know his counts very well and he doesn't optimize very well often either he just really? goes by feel yeah he we're talking about this too i was like why don't you just really? spend the time to learn he's like i just uh i already spent too much time on this game i don't want to. i'm like dude That's you're mad. flying this to like so many like... regionals and internationals you might just learn on the plane ride i swear he's like he goes to a lot of tournaments one in uh gbl before Yes. Yeah, he, you you know why? He just runs Double Charm. <laughs> yeah. He runs Giratina, Double Charm, and Master League too. <laughs> He's literally hit number one in the GBL. No, no, he has, he has. But 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 there's a lot of people that do and still don't like um like Liquid Ken, right? Uh like he, he's hit like really high in the leaderboards and he doesn't know how to optimize at all. He just goes by feel or like visuals. That's wild, man. There's a lot of people like that. Ramberto. Really? He knows how to optimize generally, but not. You know, someone else I talked to recently, I was on the flight yeah. back because he was on the same flight as me, X Gerald. Mm. He's not that clean with the optimization either. He was telling me this. That's wild. Yeah. I... <laughs> that makes you really reflect on you performing under, performing them, and be like, how, did, how come I can't do it? Right. <laughs> scrims. Yeah. That's what I'm saying from earlier. Scrims. Mm. Do your scrims. It's true. It's true. Anyway, congrats to Emmy Weird. I feel like we've been on this for a hot second, but um but yeah. Let's uh you want to sit the Asia qualifiers for now and then we'll just talk about the events. We'll just cover that yeah. next week. Please so yeah. apologies to the general public because I've been slacking in terms of updating Drake of his. <laughs> um oh, but yeah, hopefully it will I'm actually to... be done. Is that by you? The time. Yeah, it's me, it's me. Oh, because I, I was trying. Um, I, I I thought. Well, you're on the website dev side now, or, or you you took a uh, no, I, kind of in it, like uh, yeah. Because I mean, usually I do the website anyway, but um, like I've it's because of EUIC and stuff like that. Like uh, yeah, EUIC, yeah. and then I got ill, 
um and then i just like like all that together i was like oh i just didn't yeah. have the time to like uh, put in um but generally um i'd like to go over we had the first two <coughs> so okay i'll oh, we'll start with the, the so we had the first two um uh asia qualifiers happening um this weekend um now the first one was india mm-hmm. now the indian qualifiers so there's two qualifiers and i think maybe i discussed this last week um but it's confirmed that players can't enter the first qualifier and also the second qualifier they have to choose which one to enter right now oh that, yeah, yeah yeah i got you that in consideration yeah the india qualifier the first one had 256 players yeah they capped which is they capped which is insane yeah so i'm like who how many players are they gonna have in the second one because wow um you get and, from it? nah so it's obviously it's online it's like a you oh, the, know, footage the, of, the, the, the footage of the second one is more important, actually. Now, I think. Yeah, yeah, the the footage of the playoffs, I feel like, yeah. is the one I'm gonna try and get. Um, but yeah, it's because it's like online Swiss. It's like players can send their footage if they want. Yeah. Them. Um, and obviously we had eight. Uh, we had eight players. Um, uh, qualify. Um, so starting from the bottom, so Nava Empire just managed to scrape it at number eight so okay. um and it's not necessarily that he's still just top eight even with 256 yeah and you know what uh, let me let me look at the overall standings because basically numbers two to eight had the same record yeah right they had seven they all went seven one mm-hmm. um i'm gonna check the overall standings and see what number nine had because so number nine was also seven one however numbers eight to two so like uh, Nava Empire, for example, had a 14 and 3 record, mm-hmm. whereas number 9, which was V Bassist, had a 14 and 4 record. So um came down to came down to game wins, and I think yeah. that's a fair way to decide it, to be honest. Um so Nava Empire got um eighth place. Um seventh place is Mega Amanji. Um sixth place is Shagambora. Fifth place, Simon plays. Now, a lot of these players we've had competing in our um, Asia Pacific Championships, right? Simon plays just joined um, this month. I don't know a lot about this person, yeah, but they just joined on this recent season. They've been, you know, they're starting in like the lower bracket, but they've been like winning their games. Mm-hmm. But then I saw this like it was a practice Indian regional tournament. Yeah, it was like just practice. Loads of players, like I think over 200 players or something like that, um, just a double elimination sort of thing. And Simon Plays was beating some heavy hitters in there, yeah. So I don't know who they are, yeah, but I'm definitely watching them when it comes what to are, What if it could be a name change? Someone that's been around them, maybe. Ah, uh, that's a good point, you know. We don't know. Yeah, I'm, I might look into that for next episode and see. Because, yeah. Uh, um, so Spider-Man, Emissary of Darkness. Yeah. <laughs> um, very funny guy. Well done, number four. Uh, the Ace Lancelot, um, Leroy, um, 453. So I don't actually recognize that name at all. Yeah. Um, and swept the whole tournament. So 8 and 0 was Beelzeboy. Oh, uh, yeah. He's a good. Very well known name. Yeah. 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 I found um, him all the time in GBL. I met him in Japan, actually, Wes. Yeah. I think yeah, uh, yeah. a fellow listener of the podcast, too. Yeah. Well, well done, Beelzeboy. Yeah. Um, is he on a, is he on a well. Battle Frontier team right now? I know he used to be on body centers, but they broke apart. Right? Yeah, I feel like he used to, but I don't know about now. But I mean, it's possible he, he could be on be one on of the Indian uh, team, yeah. the Indian teams because the Indians like. Wait, do they have like they have the Asia region for Battle Frontier yeah, too, right? Battle Frontier, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is why are we facing mostly like an Asian team right now in NA playoffs? Are they like so that Asian team specifically decided to play in NA? Oh, uh, okay, which is why, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the percentage is though. So like maybe there's like more. NA players than Asian players. No, nah, no, nah, there's more Asian players. Oh, there are? Why, why? Yeah, and they're straight up like an Asian team. They were in Worlds, um, Silph Worlds last year, India. Oh. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. just want to play in NA? I mean, okay. Yeah. I guess they feel like maybe the competition's better. Or something. I, I don't know why. I mean, that, maybe, but... I don't know. Polly got three votes, so. <laughs> to be honest, the thing is, is that like the, what it looks like from initial, you know, without looking at the playoffs, um, the, Asian brackets are mostly filled with Indian teams with like the odd Japanese team here and there. Uh, so maybe maybe they just want to play against other Indian teams, you know. 
Um, because also a lot of the Indian teams are from the same group as well. Yeah. Um, they're all from like the cave of elite, I guess. I see. I see. Um, anyway. Um, so that was the Indian qualifier. So eight players, uh, qualified to the playoffs and at the second qualifier, another eight players will, players will qualify and then there'll be 16 players at the playoffs. I see. Then we have the Thailand qualifier. Now this is just one qualifier, so it will be qualifier and playoffs. Now the thing is with the Thailand qualifier is that even last year it was kind of like uh, criticized in the circuit for being a small tournament, but still um, offering the same amount of qualifications. Um, I'm still in the belief that the Thailand should have been combined with APAC, but yeah. how know, many players? Is total is players now. for Thailand. So total players they had playing was 47, okay. which. Um, is more than last year for sure but i don't know if it's i i have a feeling it may be like the least amount of players out of yeah. all the qualifiers and ever it was what more it than last they had less than 47 last year yeah man they had like 32 or something last year so it was really oh, uh, dude. that's why i was like well it really needs yeah. to be uh, where was the wadash yeah. tree for that one um the so they had 16 um players qualify and then obviously there'll be playoffs mm -hmm. so you had uni dream 1406 eyes the lazy polar bear i feel like i recognize this player from the last year's playoffs <coughs> zephyr win also probably last year's players critic um ken ken me Tum, black trainer trap pain who's like known black in trainer community. yeah saying yeah <laughs> got a logo and everything um <laughs> uh zonakum um tiptoe sun guki not okay. Sangoku, Sanguki. um teddy ness who was the second place yeah. um player of uh last year i didn't realize teddy ness um, was from thailand i thought teddy ness was yeah, from korea yeah, last yeah. Year. very good teddy player is, teddy ness as well. yeah they, they beat rising worlds too right yeah yeah they made, they so teddy ness is also um uh played in started in the division two of the asia pacific championships yeah. and like pretty much murked division two completely and is now mm. like competing in division one is doing pretty well so what um, what, what place did like tennis get division. so uh what here yeah he got fifth place so he went four and one oh, um right. losing to usually they say who they lose to next to the thingy um, on this one, they haven't, but let me just take a quick look. Um, lost to Ken Ken, it seems like. Mm. So, yeah. Um, yeah, lost to Ken Ken. Uh, Hideki, um, who also, I think, got to playoffs last year. Uh, Ant slash Double Hippo, um, also a really good player, uh, was APC Division 1. And then sweeping it all, a very good friend and fake CEO of Drake of his, BJ Power, yeah, uh, who went six and zero. Oh. Wow! Um, and did honestly, he, drop, he didn't drop a game, right? He went two zero. Oh. He he did. He went twelve and zero. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did not drop a game. And I'm, you know what? The thing is, I'm not surprised, man. This guy's just become like the fourth or fifth legend of the season. Um, like. I don't know. Well, whatever's in the water, wherever he's living, uh, is pretty good. Pretty good. I beat him in scrims, you know? though. <laughs> for yeah, well, he he won where it mattered. You know? Yeah, it's true. well, also he beat me in the first yeah. two games, so I said best of five. He's like, all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go over reverse. Yeah, you got him with old. Switch. Yeah, because if I lost there, I'd be like best Ooh. of seven. <laughs> I just kept going. Yeah, but um, yeah. So well done to all those players. So. Um, hopefully by the time you lot are listening, I'll actually have the event pages up and like, uh, stuff like the teams. Yeah, work on UIC first, like man. Work on UIC um, first. <laughs> no, UIC is done, right? Well, done. not on the player pages. Cause well, when yeah, I that's not me though. Results. That's not me. That's oh, strange. okay. I didn't know. Oh, I don't know. Um, you say, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what you do, but, um, yeah. So hopefully you have all that sorted, um, in time for the weekend, because the weekend is. Orlando Regional. That's right. And Perth Regional, the very first cool. streamed Australian regional. So Steve and Debbie did the work. Unfortunately, it couldn't have happened for Melbourne Regional. Um, however, it's happening for Perth. So here's the thing. Obviously, the same like, you know, uh, the negative and a positive. Obviously, the positive is 
this is amazing that it's happening. Yeah. The negative is it had to start on Perth Regional. How However, many people registered for it? Uh, honestly, I think from what I last heard, and this was about a week ago, yeah, I think it was like 20 something. Mm. I'm a bit disappointed about. It. One day, uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, is that like, so. Oh, whoops. Hopefully, um, they don't the do is, like is a that, day two top cut because that just like people just got cash. I think out it might hotels. just be one day. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. yeah. Um, but basically, there's like there's that? there is some good place. Uh, there is some good players who are competing. Yeah. So I think that the top cut competition will still be good. So you've got like Rick Flareon who's competing. So Rick Flareon, Avrip, Rob Drogo. Um, gone 1001 who also came to EYC yeah um, I, I was like wait this guy looks familiar yeah. <laughs> I was like what's um, he doing this region so you've got those four yeah um, you've also got um, a couple new names who mm. I'd say are worth keeping an eye on so oh, Rob Drogo didn't even Latinas. compete this year either who? oh Rob Drogo hasn't even competed this year is it because yeah, he, lives he only in usually Perth? competes in Perth yeah, yeah. Perth to OCIC yeah. and Worlds and that's it. Um, and also, I think he said he's like working a lot this season or something like oh, that. So okay. that's the only one he can actually. Yo, reach. my fellow Bastion. Like um, yeah. Um, so we've got Jai Loves Latinas, who's also actually a fan of Shadow A9. So I'm not going to lie. I think he's always got A9 in his team, regardless. Yeah. So, um, and <laughs> he's got to uh, change that 89. <laughs> <laughs> yeah unfortunately it's a shame because who doesn't right um, but, um, <laughs> and, we're not gonna um and then that, there's 89 but... flames fan <laughs> yeah um who is like very young but like you know uh, a pretty decent player and i think could uh you know could do some work um i'm not sure who else is attending slash is competing Kobovich slash has going looking. So Vish, I don't think is going. He's like um, just made a, a city move, um, mm-hmm. and you know he's got like a lot of family stuff happening at the moment. So I don't think he'll be going. Um, now Jacob, see the thing is, I was actually going to ask him like a day ago, yeah, because he made a comment on Twitter being like, sure "Yo, should we just spontaneously turn sure up?" Did. Yeah. Don't tease and, us like that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Is is a very is a strong Yo. possibility. Yeah. I the race for the trio regional <laughs> is on. Doombug and Lyle both got double, right? Yeah. And it's I know very, Lyle signed up for Indy. Yeah. Doombug's probably competing. I don't know how many more he's competing. He's probably yeah. competing like five more regionals. Who knows? But it's, uh, yeah, I think is, it's, it's very possible Yacobus that Yacobus he could be the first up. person in the history of Pokemon to go on top of that. He could be, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, no, no. There's uh, in the same season, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of course, in the same season, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he was also the first person to do two regionals in the same season, so. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so he keep up the record. Yeah. Keep oh right, record. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. He'd be the first one. Um, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very, it's very possible. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but we have some sick casters as well. We have obviously we got Steve, Debbie. I, I don't know how Steve is gonna be producing and casting at the same time, but you know what. Right. I mean, I did some of that when we did um, the Asia Asia tournament, but ah, uh, yeah, I guess so. But I feel easy, like if you're <laughs> if you're running the whole tournament, uh, oh, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend like, it. It's, yeah, it's a I lot feel of like work. if you've got other people to do it, why not? Um, Fishy Legs, who's you know mm-hmm. been doing some casting, he did a casting for our APC um, Champions tournament, yeah. and he's done casting for other grassroots. I think he did the Sylph uh, APAC um, okay. Continentals as well. And then rise to occasion mm-hmm. on his like technically official tournament casting debut ish uh, because it's, it's like, like official, official tournament. tournament. It's not an official stream, but it's an official tournament. So yeah, official tournament I guess so. casting yeah, debut. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll give him that. Um, so that's exciting. That's very exciting. That's exciting. Um, and yeah, uh, the the one thing I actually I, I didn't forget to mention, but I was about to mention it, and then I was already on the tangent, so I was like, okay, let me not mention it now. But um. Where is my thing? Where is it? You've been on a tangent. <laughs> That's for sure. You about to? You were so far down the look. I, I hate, but you're so far <laughs> down the list of players you're naming. You're almost at player number twenty-seven at that point, right? I was like, you might as well just name everyone else to go into this tournament, right? <laughs> Rev, I was only on like I wasn't even on. Dude, eight, you name yeah, more. Good. You name more players than the top couple will have, right? <laughs> I wasn't even on eight, yeah. But anyway, anyway, um, so um. Just a quick recap of the Japanese, um, you know, qualifiers for PJCS. Um, so these happen every weekend. So every weekend we'll have new 
uh, players who have qualified yeah. for PJCS. So this give me the bullet points weekend, for this one. Don't don't give me the full story. Give me the bullet points. <laughs> okay, one. okay. So one. I'll, I'll, I'll mention. <laughs> don't name every Japanese do player that played in these. Right, just tell okay, me okay. one. I'll I don't care if they do went. Recognize. They they should have won, but they didn't. Right, just name a one. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So we had uh, KDK, okay. um, Renton Thurston. <laughs> Um, Phantom Ace, who also qualified for Worlds last year. Yeah. Um, let's see. Makurare Telku, who's also known as... Um, is he known as like Coco Melon or something like that on uh, Twitter? But he also qualified for Worlds last year and was on stream. Um, I don't know if he was on stream in uh, just PJCS or Worlds and PJCS. But. Yeah. Vix Rosie Snapper, young player, really new, but like really good um been like doing really well in a lot of show six stuff yeah uh double o danka um famous player from uh the first worlds who ran a a very wild nido queen shadow mm. nido queen and this was before people were looking at ivs i think he just ran it because it was shiny but it was beating swamp on cmp which is wild um uh jesus our good friend yeah, okay. so he actually qualified after his brother qualified. Nice, nice. Um, Who's his brother again? K Bon, also a good player. Wh who's and, Jesus' brother again? Uh, Kai Sayari, two days, something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you if you see the name, you'd be like, oh, maybe I recognize. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and the rest of the players I don't personally recognize, but you know, if they do well enough and they're worth recognizing then i will be giving a spotlight on them dude PJCS, so. you don't have to do that well for a little recognition from manicore here <laughs> he, <laughs> name your hey. name if he never recognized your name from somewhere you know yeah he'd be like yo this is the best player from this region <laughs> yeah. and they are Man's naming yeah. people that like <laughs> that best finish was like and a 35th <laughs> hey. um so yeah hopefully i get the website sorted over the next few days and before the weekend uh, oh, okay that's my goal hopefully today okay. uh, it would have definitely happened if caleb hadn't robbed me asleep but rob you asleep dude it's oh it's, it's, oh, it's almost 1 a.m my time let's talk about who robbed me asleep right <laughs> you about to name <laughs> you about to name every single pokemon go player in the entire apac oceana <laughs> region combined right let's, let's talk about who's robbing who asleep <laughs> all right let's go over the events real quick because uh it's it's getting late so uh we have the bug out events mm -hmm. um this is coming up the 12th to the 17th so by the time you hear this it's probably ready out uh honestly nothing that good i mean there's combi in the wild for extra dust i yeah. guess shuckle in the wild for that catch cup which would be kind of nice yeah. uh that's about it yeah, yeah honestly it's a bit mid i think the best things are uh mega heracross and tapu bulu yeah and that's, not, that's, and that's not even like really related to the event either that's yeah. just rates oh yeah. increased xl candy for nice throws are better so uh be good for the shuckle yeah. i guess that's about it yeah, yeah. Crust, true, true. crustal maybe dweeble for XL crustal. I don't know. Yeah, just, that's about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe pine. You don't even need that many XLs for that either. No, you really don't. Wind pods back uh, in spawns or in research has, but like we just had a bunch of those. Anyway, kind of yeah. a mid event, but it's okay. We don't have to. Uh, it's not every event's yeah. going to be that good. Um, true, true. and then we have hair cross raid day, mega hair cross raid day. Uh, yeah, yeah. two p.m. to five p.m. on the thirteenth. So I believe <laughs> that's that going to be. Sunday? saturday oh saturday so they're uh, regionals uh, yeah i guess i can play a bit increased chance of shiny hair cross you know mega energy blah 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 there's like a ticket event too if you want to i mean it's cool uh it's it's what it is uh, i want to say it's like i don't even think it's that that good event it's just better than the bug out event <laughs> like yeah, do a few sure. right um spend your free <laughs> yeah, pass you get free seven raids so like why not anyway? yeah and i think you get yeah. well do you well, yeah, 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 seven additional. additional. Yeah, yeah. Two normal in it, yeah. Well, um, oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you bank one, you yeah. get eight, and yeah. you get even more eight oh, additional yeah, ones yeah, on top yeah. of that if you buy the ticket. But that's up yeah. to you. True, true, true. Um, so yeah, that does it for that event. Um, honestly, we could talk about the Bell Sprout Community Day next week because they'll still be around. Um, it's getting late. uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah obviously, you want to go to sleep. It's Can I just say though, yeah. Rev. They, you won't be the first put... one to say it. <laughs> but I know, yes, I know. Yes. This is why I'm saying it. This yeah, is why yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> they put Bell Sprout Community Day with Magical Leaf on 420. And it's the 69th Pokemon. Like, 
uh, that has to be designed. Don't explain no it for a younger audience, was... right? If you know, don't you know. explain it. No, explain it. Don't yeah, explain yeah, it. What do you mean? I don't want you to explain. Yeah. Yeah. For the younger audience, <laughs> yeah. it's just a coincidence. Uh, it's <laughs> nice, um, but well, that has to be designed, man. And I'm like, that's wild coming out of Pokemon. I'm not gonna lie, but yeah. Anyway. Well, if you know, you know. Whoever yeah. whoever green lit it on Niantic end well definitely did not know. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> they definitely yeah. did not think this yeah. through, yeah. right? That's true. That's true. There's no way, yeah. right? This is like something cheeky That's you would true. do for your boss. And like, my boss is too old to figure out what this is, right? They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. Yeah, yeah, the 20th of April. Yeah, 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 the 20th of April. Well, Pokemon <laughs> oh, Bellstraw. Yeah, it's, it's something from the first generation, right? Well, what's the Pokemon? Yeah. Ah, something in the 60s, right? Yeah, no way. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, right there, right there. Yeah. Anyway, we'll wrap it up um, here. There's not really too much tea this week, so it's it's what it is. I think that yeah. that's probably for the best. It was a good it was a good week at EUIC. Next yeah. week, Anakul gonna have some clown paint on. What's your hopefully ELO at, man? You're about to have like a whole yeah, hopefully some championship. I need an update on that. <laughs> yeah. but, dude, you're about to have the whole clown fit on and then some at this hey, point. Yes, like you better man. hit legend yeah. soon, right? Like yeah. We I think now. I'm at like 28 or something like that. So. Okay, okay. So he's still playing a little bit. So still What's the next cup? Like Master League or something? Uh, Jungle Cup and Master League. We're still okay. having another week of Jungle oh, Cup. Oh, no, it's Master Premier. No, I think it's Open oh, is it Master, Master Premier. League. I think it's straight up Master Open Master League. League. It should be okay. straight up Open Master League. Master Premier might come up come later. Right. I think, cool, yeah. Cool, cool. But cool. anyway, thanks all for joining in. Um, but uh, if you're in Orlando, I'll see you all there. I'll be commentating. And uh, yeah. if not, hopefully you tune in and hopefully it's a good time. Hope, good luck to everyone at Perth as well. And uh, good luck to Anacor with his uh, four-person challenge that he... <laughs> he I hope I get four people. That's, yeah. that's really yeah. the Yeah, If you get points and it's because you got points just for going, <laughs> then that's even worse, right? Like, <laughs> like, I, hey, I'm uh, going to take him. I don't care. <laughs> I made the trip there. Something, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no anyway, working, pays off. Uh, World States are out by the way it's the 16th to 18th of August mm -hmm. so get your tickets if you can um, but yeah until then we'll catch you all next week peace out Safe.